Hello, listening people. Hello, my people. You're listening to Spin Posh Presents Unappreciated Masterpieces. I'm Ryan Slowinski. He is Ryan Slowinski. Everyone give a round of applause. Good job, me. And really I'm Bartek. Nice. All the crickets make a sound. Yes. Good job, crickets. <laughs> so, why we call it Spin Polish? It's likingly because we are always spitting. And we both happen to be Polish. Isn't that right? Yeah, coincidentally, we both happen to be Polish. I mean, we're not brothers or anything. No. I mean, you wouldn't know because Bartek didn't say his last name. So, it could have led you to the idea that he's my brother. But, no. Mm. And if he was, he's one I don't really want to see very often. You know you know what I'm talking only, about? That only relative? for 58 episodes. Oh, no, you've been... 55-ish Something episodes. episodes. So, what do we do on Unappreciated Masterpieces? Bartek. Well, we make fun of each other, clearly. And I get crickets I'm not and making, you get applause. I'm not making... You chose the applause. You chose the crickets. Oh, I didn't no. force I, I have, these on you. I have to be the self-deprecating one because you won't do it. I deprecate oneself. I have to sleep in shit and you get to sleep in a bed. That's not my fault, Bartek. Sorry, we're getting too personal. Let's... Let's... Yeah, let's... Ryan, just calm down. Let's just do the show. On unappreciated master... Ryan, just calm. On unappreciated masterpieces, we take films that, at the crux of it, need more love. Whether it's films that once had love or it's films that uh, never had love. Films that we feel have the potential to actually be cult classics. Films that some people might like, but they're just not enough people Mm. to make it great. So what we do here is we watch these films in our own time, and then we come back, do this show, we watch the films muted while we chat about them, and we give them essentially an audio commentary that gets right into the meat of why these films are not only worthy of being appreciated, but why they are possibly some of the greatest films ever made. Oh, that's definitely right. Mm-hmm. The, the greatest films ever made. And what is a, a great film that did not get the love that it deserved that we're going to be tackling. Now, I, I know I know, we might have hinted in our last episode... We might have what even it made could a been, cliffhanger. Yeah. And we, I don't know if we stay... Uh, yeah, uh, we, did, we have stated, I have stated, and I will state again, that this month we are doing uh, duologies. Mm-hmm. So, mo- film series that were so good that they needed only two films to tell the story. Mm-hmm. And last week we did a first film... Yeah. So some of you might be thinking, oh, are they doing a second film? I didn't read the title. I just clicked a random episode. No, Ooh. we're not doing a second film. We're doing a completely new film. Yes. We are doing Centrinian's Legend of Fitton's Gold. Ah, oh, man. Look, usually the shtick is I don't speak Polish, and that's true. I don't, even though I am. And I don't know what the title of the film is, but boy, did that sound very much like... Centrinians, The Legend of Fritten's Gold. It sounded similar, but it's not the English title of the film, Ryan. Oh, no. What is it? <laughs> it's St. Trinian's 2, oh, The far. Legend of Fritten's Gold. Far out. <laughs> it's so... What do you mean the 2009 classic, St. Trinian's 2? That's right. St. Trinian's 1 did have a follow-up, in case you didn't know. Mm-hmm. Many people didn't know that. And yes, it was released in theatres. That is true. But we aren't doing this alone. Last time we had a female guest. This time we have a female guest. Is it Grace Brown again? No. 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 No, 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 no. But it is an expert Mm -hmm. on issues related to British film. (gasps) You mean that guest? Yes, that guest. Welcome, that guest. Hi, that guest. Hello. Hi, Lauren. (laughs) Lauren Tice (laughs) is here, and Lauren has been... Every episode you've appeared on has had a Harry Potter, a Harry Potter actor of some sort. Does this one? Yes. Yes. Which one? David Tennant. Is he the only one? I think so. Well, clearly you're wrong, but we'll get into that. <laughs> so, you guys have to get your copy of the 2009 classic of Centrinians 2, The Legend of Britain's Gold, because we are going to start this... Okay, so get it ready, because you guys want to watch along as we do the feature-length audio commentary. I mean, you're going to be lost if you aren't, and if you have seen it before, well, that's okay. I'll give you a bit of a, give you a, bit of a pass, like Fritton would on a test. Mm-hmm. So, get it ready, because we're going to start in Oh, three. I'm going to say two. Three. Two. One. Play. So, this is 
uh, a cinematic uh, classic, you would say. But no, it isn't. People really did not know that this film exists outside of, oh, isn't David Tennant a villain in that movie? Because you're not used to him playing a villain, especially back then in 2009. I mean, maybe now, after he did the TV show Jessica Jones, in which he's played one of the best villains in the Marvelverse, but it's just kind of like, he a villain? No way! He with, David Tennant with gray hair? One time I was talking to Lauren about this. What's not Lauren? Mm-hmm. And I said, the only thing I know about Centrinians too is David Tennant has grey hair. And she just went, yeah, his hair is pretty great. <laughs> and then proceeded to have like a five minute spiel about how great his hair is. And I'm like, no, no. But you know what this movie does have great amount of? Graphics. Uh, nice illustrations. Nice graphic design. What did I write? I wrote down I maps know. equals treasure equals pirates. She nailed the. She nailed this. Whole really? Story. Wow! I got <laughs> yeah. it even better. In my notes, I wrote maps must be the high seas of 1589, <laughs> and I got it. Wow. Nailed it. Nailed it. I'm so good at figuring out timelines from just well, graphics. Well, in my notes, I said nice boat. And he did say that. I read that in his notes, which I was, he never brings. And I was almost 100% correct, because there are actually two boats. So, one of my favourite aspects of this movie is... Spoilers alert! I'm just going to jump on in. Oh, 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 oh. Fuck yeah. Did you guys see this opening sequence? Uh, no, uh, uh, this is 100% true. I watched this. I've never seen this film before. I've only seen the first one. So, doing this show was the first time seeing the sequel. And I saw this opening sequence and went... That Fritten's a woman, yeah? Like, and my girlfriend said, no, it's a man. And I'm like, are you sure? I'm pretty sure it's a woman. And then I was proven right by the movie. I'm so proud. And the only reason. You caught the subtle clue. uh, Do you know what the subtle clue was? It was the voice, right? No. The wig. No. It's the The teeth. The teeth. Because in the previous movie, the Fritten male guy the, ah, the guy he didn't right. have the teeth ah. and then later on in the movie they show shakespeare's portrait and what do you see the teeth so i guess the fritten women have teeth like identify but hang on you you thought that this was a woman just from this scene yeah because, that was just later evidence yeah okay i saw it and went oh, this is a woman yeah because of the teeth and the way he plays it is more like miss fritten mm-hmm. than he does say the dad in the previous one and i'm like oh maybe it's different time period and my girlfriend like dismissed me but i was like i don't know i don't know but were you like expecting that twist or was that i just... did not expect it to be explained to be honest okay, you just... <laughs> i did not expect the twist to be honest i actually thought there was gonna be gold okay you so... were just buying that like he was just playing it silly yeah oh here's a question lauren mm. in this film series and Barza, you can answer this too mm-hmm. every adult Fritten in every time period is Rupert Everett. Does this mean that Tallulah Riley <laughs> is <laughs> going to grow up to, to be, be Rupert, Rupert Everett? Everett? Ryan, you have not given Ooh. us evidence to suggest otherwise. So we... Exactly. Has, has so she grown up yet? The answer no. is yes. <laughs> so I suppose the immediate question is, like, Ryan, obviously I'm the same as you. I hadn't even seen either of these two films until the show. Lauren, had you seen this film before? No, I'd heard about it. I'd watched David some Tennant. scenes, but not not it in its entirety. Okay, so wow. it was a fresh experience for us all. I know, Lauren. She only watched the David Tennant scenes, am I right? Because you're a big Doctor Who yes, fan. Yes, yes, yes. Does it disappoint you that Doctor Who's trash? Yes. <laughs> it sounds like, where did Doctor Who touch you, Lauren? Here, in my heart, with its trashy hands. Uh, I love this scene. I really expected the end credits to be the police still there. Like, still (laughs) sitting there, like, oh, hopefully they come out so we can do our jobs. Here's the thing that annoys me about sequels sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it annoys me about this is where the first one leaves you. This, that Centridian's actually, like, it's still an anarchy filled place but it's kind of redeemed itself by winning the school challenge so it's actually got like some prestige yeah, I was gonna say and then in this exactly. movie it's completely gone like the cops are scared and I'm like but didn't the school get its prestige back I don't think it necessarily got like super respect 
for winning that thing. I think it just... Oh, I, I think it did. And that's why I was a bit disappointed. I was like, oh, they could have played a, a Toby Jones. Great stunt there, man. And here we have a new click. I know, right? Did you yeah. know what they were going to be called? Because I'm like, is this what the they think hipsters were going to be? Like, this was before yeah. hipsters. So I'm like, bright, colourful guys and girls. Or just girls. I'm like, are they hipsters? I hope so. No. With, with me, I, I kind of... As soon as this chick entered, though, whatever her name is, I didn't get understand her name at all. It's Girl. It's um, I... Singer of Girls Aloud. Yes. I, she does not look like a high school student at all. No, she looks about mid thirties. It's because she's a like singer of girls allowed. And I'm sitting there going, "That's so unbelievable." So you've already got complaints, yes. jeez, Lauren. Yes. Is is the idea that a man dressed up as a woman in charge of an old girls' school too unrealistic for you? I'm not hearing a no. I mean, it is a British thing, so. <laughs> as is having old women pretend to be schoolgirls. The fuck was wrong with Harry Potter? It had none of that. Hey. Maggie Smith was pretty old. All right? Jeez. She was the best schoolgirl character of them all, right? She was Hermione, yeah? I can't remember. I haven't watched Harry Potter in a while. No answer from Lauren. Lauren's just disgusted. You know what I really like, too, in this sequel? In between the first one and the second one, the receptionist lady has really chilled out. Like, in the first oh, one, she was a real slap, like... Chav slapper, like really aggressive bitch. In this one, she's found her inner peace. Oh yeah, she like went to India or something. I'd really like to watch her movie, Eat, Pray, Chav, <laughs> in which it's a movie about this Chav finding her inner self in India. I would really want to watch that movie. <laughs> and and the head guru is just Rupert Everett. <laughs> oh, is it a woman though? No, as a man. Okay, so it's no no bad. As go, as a, as a Gandhi like character with a shaved head, and he's and he's still got a British accent though. Like mm-hmm. you must find yourself. <laughs> That was a really good Rupert Everett impersonation. No, that was a good proud. Gandhi impression. Ah, uh, Ben Kingsley, eat ben my Kingsley dick. Ben Kingsley will eat your shorts. I said dick. I know, he'll All eat right. both. We don't know what Ben Kingsley's into. Men, women, well, apparently Ryan, how's children, he going to but... get to your dick if you got shorts on? Who's saying I'm wearing shorts when I'm doing this podcast? I am, I'm looking at them. Don't ruin the <laughs> illusion. Some people might be sitting there thinking about us naked. Yes. Not you, Lauren, of course. Well, I mean, she can see us, so, you know. <laughs> so, Lauren, you were... Uh, were you a fan of the first movie? Yes, I was a fan of the first movie. I went Whoa. to an all girls school, so <laughs> oh, so, so that it was automatically like, it was, it makes was, you a fan. No, it was it was um compulsory viewing. Did you snarl at new girls? No. Are you sure you went to yeah. a all girls school? Yes, Lauren? I am. I don't 100% know. Percent sure. Well, I can say that I went to two all guys schools. My first one uh, does not go be- did not go beyond year ten. So uh, uh, when most of us went to the same school for year 11 and 12, we all got snarled at by all the old boys. who Did were, you? Yes, they were all like, boys, they're not from here. But then we're like, wait, we're cool. And like, oh, and then yeah. did you become those guys when they were new guys? Uh, I mean, we only had one year of not being the new guys and no one really knew turned up to our year level except for uh, the ones below us. But then all the new people were people from the school we were at previously. So yeah, we didn't really get any experience like that. Fun fact. Yeah, fun. The emos are in this movie again. Mm-hmm. And now the, the chavs, chavs are not chavs, they're rude girls. But my favourite thing is, I did not know that the head emo was a different actress yes, from the it first was, it movie. Yes, it wasn't Paloma Faith. It wasn't How am Paloma I supposed Faith. to know? She looks so much like Paloma Faith. No, she doesn't. Yes, she does. The hair colouring's different. Yeah, no, but obviously, but everyone's hairstyle has changed since the last movie, so cut me some slack, Lauren. I mean, at first, I guess I thought it was the same person, but then as I watched the movie and I realised she wasn't a character, I was like, oh, maybe they didn't get her back and that was someone else. But... And then new nerd chick, my favorite character, one of my favorite characters in the movie, fat she was, nerd lady. She was pretty good. Yeah, she was great. She had that really high pitched voice. It reminded me of someone, but I can't put my finger on it. I don't know who. What? Who? I just said I can't put my finger on it. Oh man! And the posh toddies are back, except for two of them did not return. <laughs> oh really? I only noticed one of them was different. Yeah, two. And I was really confused because I saw this character, and I'm like. But wait, Judo Temple is in this movie. I read the IMDb. This girl's not Judo Temple. Because she's like, what? She's in charge of the hippie gang. I'm like, where's Judo Temple? Then Judo Temple rocks up trying to fucking 
steal? Like, and I'm like, this isn't Judo Temple's character. I feel really invested in Judo Temple's character over these two movies. I will be honest, she went on a roller coaster ride of mixed emotions, feelings, loyalty. In the first one, was she the one that gave the chamomile tea to them? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you gotta love, too, that they've got a new character in this movie. Many. The Roxy. The Roxy. Oh, chick. that's her name. Yeah, well, obviously, because it's Rock. See, also, and she's what, in Rachel, Girls Allowed. Uh, hmm? I, almost, I almost called her Rachel. Lauren said, like, oh, I don't know her name. But then the guy in the van was like, hey, Roxy. And I was like, oh, it's Roxy then. So it's Roxy. But, you know, you think, oh, is this girl going to be the new upcomer like the previous movie? No. she. You know what her story arc is? She's going to make her own g- click of herself. Like, there's no one, no one else joins her group at the end of the movie, really. Yeah, in a way, that's admirable. She just wants to be herself. Yeah. Which is I, honestly contrary to what we were saying last week. But it week. also brings in Annabelle. Like, she's not in a click. Well, no. Yep. Is she? She's head girl. She's in the head but girl But she clique. did have an initiation scene in the first, first film. First movie. Like, the film is about conformity, but with this Roxy chick, it's about proper rebellion and I'm yeah. like a, and a rebellion and that's that. so deep that she doesn't even become that major of a character yeah you could say that she didn't serve much to the plot but that's wrong she played guitar in the third act and you know what they say about Chekhov's guitar if you introduce a guitar in the first act you've got to have it played really loud with a turned up to 11 spinal tap reference in the third act that's how guitars work you Chekhov's know? guitars well, no, just guitars in general. Like, real life's like a three-act structure. So if you have a guitar when you're a baby, you're going to have to play it when you're an old man. There's no in-between area, okay? You can't just play it midlife. Okay? Jeez. So we've got a whole cacophony of characters in this film, I will say. I think that is a strength of this particular movie, is we do focus on the girls a lot more. Mm-hmm. Like, it actually was kind of weird when Colin Firth rocked up in the movie for yeah. me I'm like oh that's right he is in this it's like the cre- the opening credits mentioned Colin Firth he was one of the first names we had that flashback just a minute ago of yeah. him from the previous film as well as the leitmotif from the film whenever Camilla thought about him so that told us he would be here but he doesn't come that immediately and he's not the antagonist no and I think that's the weird thing that this movie also has a very very clear antagonist figure like in the other one he's your Walter Peck antagonist from Ghostbusters where all they are is just doing their job like they're not actually an evil person in any fashion like yeah, and, they, and I guess they have n- a noble goal in the end in yeah. the larger picture not necessarily but then the again Lauren as you know you've watched this movie now knowing that Colin Firth's character spoiler alert for this movie that Colin Firth's character was a member of a secret sexist society does that alter how he actually operated in the first movie because he was taken down an old girls school now with the knowledge that he was actually in the supreme sexist organisation does that make his goals in the first movie even more sinister no, because he actually says he joined it when he was young, when he was trying to build up. And he his own built status. up all the way to the top. I'm with Lauren in the no, but I can see how an influence from the past could, uh, again, I've sorry to use the words two times in a sentence, but influence your actions in the future, maybe even subconsciously. Yeah. I would give him that they weren't a major factor, because as you said, he was just doing his job, he was education minister, but it certainly. And even the characters in this film acknowledge it. It certainly doesn't bode well for his character. No. But the film just gives him that nicety of not bringing up the first film, what he did there. Yeah, fair enough. (laughs) Now, now, this film has, you know, the interesting thing of the opening credits were the three males of the movie, where it's like Rupert Everett, Colin Firth, and David Tennant. And then credits... Movie, yeah, and then it's like, Wikipedia, oh, and the girls. Even Wikipedia, Tulua Riley was like fourth billing because the first three were such major actors. Yeah, and I, that's the thing though. Is David, and I know David Tennant's from Doctor Who, I'm a big fan of him as well, but at this point, was he actually a big enough name to be billed in the top three? I think so, because this movie was aimed probably more in a British <sighs> demographic. When was he on Doctor Who? Well, this was, I think, just after he'd announced his exit from Doctor Who, from yeah, memory. He was on from, like, 2006 to 
2010? So he would yeah, be yeah, pretty so, well yeah, known. Yeah, it was pretty well known. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, David Tennant, but he had grey hair in this, Lauren. Did anyone recognise him? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. You don't sound he, had his, sure. he had his Doctor Who-isms. Doctor Who-isms. You mean his David Tennant-isms. Mm-hmm. He's got... I realised I've watched a lot of David Tennant things at recent and I realise he's not as versatile as an actor as I once thought he might have been. You didn't recognise his lips? I actually did because this sequence here is very reminiscent to what they do in the TV show Jessica Jones when they're introducing his character. His character has the ability of mind control with his voice, right? And they do very similar kind of shots in, in, the, in that show when introducing him. So, this movie really was the spine for where David Tennant's career was going to go. It was saying, we're going to lay the foundations for where he's going to be. Like, the, these series of shots inspired the people who made Jessica Jones. They saw him in this movie and said, ooh, he's menacing. He's playing a villain, not Doctor Who. Ooh, we want to hire that guy who was in Centurions 2, The Legend of Fritton's Gold. And another, the other people turned around and said, yes, good idea. Another example of an unappreciated masterpiece leading to a big thing. You know, exactly. when th- this is his first um, reveal, I wrote, I would make a deal with David Tennant. Well, but you don't know it's David Tennant on the I other know. end. It could be Toby Jones on the <laughs> other end. Would you make a deal with Toby Jones? Now, that would have been a plot twist if it was Versa. I wouldn't really be, would it? <laughs> I actually thought there was a point in this movie, I don't want to spoil it too heavy, there's a point in this movie where Toby Jones became really sinister for no apparent reason other than a pop culture reference, and I was just like, oh, okay. Which one's Toby Jones? He's the maths teacher. And the bird Oh, the, the goofy guy? Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. You know what I'm talking about. I think I do, yeah. I would, I would hope you know. <laughs> so, here we are introduced to Gemma Arterton from the first movie. She's moved on. She's now... Robbing places, or so we think. Or detonating bombs. She's an MI7. Well, she's not detonating the bomb, she's defusing a bomb, Lauren. Oh, right. Fucking idiot. <laughs> Disposing, I think, is the word she was looking for. You know, I got really confused because this scene was met with a scene before with uh, Tallulah Riley, and it cuts and she's just in bed, and I'm like, what happened? And then I realised it's the next day. I figured it out. So... Now, we've all seen the first movie, Us Three, you know, and none of us really properly saw this movie until doing this show, that's fair to say. Lauren, you've seen clips. You say properly, I haven't seen it at all. Oh, but I'm I'm saying for Lauren, she she had seen clips. That's true. Uh, Do you like this movie as much or more than the previous installment of Centrinians? It's simply entitled Centrinians. Mm-hmm. I prefer the first one. But this has the chick from the IT crowd. And also David Tennant. See? But... Building up. What about you, Bartek? I also like the first one more, but this film definitely has merits to it. You see, I'm in the minority here on this group. I really like this one more. I think what I liked about it was, last episode I said the movie had confidence in itself. This one has not just confidence, but it doesn't show any mercy in its confidence with the audience. And I think that's not how you do it, girl. Other way around with the ruler. But either way, uh, what I really liked about this movie was the comedy. I think the comedy worked for me more, and I liked the the characterizations more in this film, like the uh, the characterizations of the villain the characterization of Colin Firth a bit more. I felt like I understood where he was coming from. And maybe that's because he had a follow-up, like this is a follow-up, and we've seen his life crumble. But I felt like there was a lot more, and I just really love recurring gags in this movie, like from the Chav, where uh, she just wants to get her tongs. And I'm like, I loved that. I what is that this? Thing. And she never did get them either. I thought, oh, the climax. You know, again, Chekhov's tongs. If you're going to bring up tongs on the first act, you're obviously going to show them in the third. Didn't happen. Uh, and that's probably why this film failed, is well, the they, lack of Chekhov tongs. To be fair, the, the tongs didn't belong to Chekhov. No, they belonged to her. <laughs> you're right, they're her tongs. But I really like that recurring gag. And, you know, a film, a sequel, has to be a bit more crazy than the, the, than the original. And also... 
I like that this film did not fall into the trap of comedy sequels, Mm -hmm. which is redoing the same jokes and the same movie again, but maybe in a different location. Like, this did not do The Hangover 2. This did a completely different genre. It's still like a schoolgirls movie, but now it's a treasure movie. You know, now it's kind of a conspiracy pirate treasure movie. Exactly. It's a it's an adventure movie to say. Absolutely. And I think that's great, you know, and I like how they shifted the focus for some characters. Like the little girls aren't in it this much, but they Mm. are actually in it the same amount of screen time as they were in the first movie, but they're not as prominent. And Mm. it's not a heist movie, so they can't really do their heist stuff. And you know, Fritten. She's in it a lot in this movie, which is always great to see Rupert Everett really embody this character. And, like, look how much fun he's having describing the scene that we saw in the opening credits. This this scene is very reminiscent of The Room, in which one of the characters describes a situation in which we had already seen, like, two or three scenes earlier, in which he left his underpants behind. <laughs> yeah. Very oh, similar. Oh, he was very cold. concerned about that. All cold. Me underwears. Me underwears. Yep. <laughs> Me underwears. Key. So, you know, this film has a a lot going on for me. I love like look at this. This looks like a ship they're in. Like the way that they play with the convention of surrealism and the comedy in this one really spoke to me in comparison to the first one, where it seemed a bit too grounded for some of the more surreal comedy moments to work for me. Well, this one's just balls to the wall crazy straight off and I kind of appreciate that yes but who would win in the fight David Tennant or Stephen Fry uh clearly Stephen Fry Mm -hmm. he's massive like in height and in weight David Tennant's a string bean he would be eaten before anything happens (laughs) also David Tennant's floppy hair would get in the way of his face and then Stephen (laughs) Fry would punch him but Stephen Fry has a weak nose. It's bent. So David Tennant could, you know, suffocate it by blocking the nose passage. So, you know, the real winner is Hugh Laurie in this situation because he managed to make a career for himself in the Stuart Little movies. Yes. As Dad Little. Yeah, that was the first I ever saw of him, so I was surprised to find out he was British. Really? Wasn't he all British in that movie? I don't think he was. I don't think he was, Ryan. I think he was American. It was a house 1.0. I don't know, man. I have to revisit Stuart Little. You got me going. I thought that he had a pip... like, no, son. You're in big trouble. Oh, I thought he was all pip, pip, cheerio in that movie. I think you might be thinking of a different film, Ryan. (laughs) The different mouse film with you, Laurie? (laughs) Yeah, the different mouse film. Uh, Maybe I'm thinking of 101 Dalmatians, in which he was one of the villains with uh, Ron Weasley's dad. (laughs) Lauren just nodded. Thanks for the visual cue there, Lauren. Oh, what's it called? Mouse Hunters. Was it that one? No, that was 101 no, Dalmatians. No, Borrowers. No, you're thinking of just <laughs> Mouse Hunters. He literally said 101, 101 Dalmatians. Dalmatians. <laughs> She's thinking of the Christopher Walken classic, Mouse Hunt, in which he plays a mouse hunter for uh, Nathan Lane and Lee Evans. Wasn't there a film where the actor who played Snowbell and Stuart Little was after a mouse? Yeah, that film was called Stuart Little. I'm pretty sure. No, no, no. it was a live action one. It was like Mouse Trap, Mouse something. Mouse Hunt. I don't know. It was the actor who played the cat in Stuart Little. I'm pretty sure that's Nathan Lane. So I'm okay. pretty sure it's Mouse Hunt. Yeah. Mouse okay. Trap. Maybe maybe we're just talking about the same film. Is that the one where at the end they allow the mouse to live with them yeah. and help them cook yeah. food? Yeah. Does that one have the poster of like the mouse is eating an olive or something? Probably. Yeah, I think I can't remember. But you know what I can remember? This chick really straddled that pole. And that was great comedy, you know, right there. Now, when I saw this, it made me think of Thunderbirds. In Thunderbirds... Uh, not Thunderbirds. In Thunderbirds, they defeat enemies with goo. With green Nickelodeon goo. And I thought, oh, that's great. And then they throw it on the bad guys. I'm like, really? Goo? And then smoke comes off their faces and they're screaming horribly and I'm like, like oh my god they actually they actually (laughs) threw acid at people I like how they leave her be like they're like oh we don't want to interrupt she's too zen we don't want to you know we don't want to block her chakras she's on another plane Ryan now Lauren as a kid would you have loved this movie because we were a bit older when we were second how how old are we talking no like the age of these twin girls Oh, I probably would have loved this when I was... Would you have loved the Full 11. Metal Jacket reference that you just had there with Born to Kill? 
I probably that probably would have flown over my head. Flown over your helmet. Get it right. It needs more of the drill sergeant. Yeah, it needs more Vincent D'Onofrio killing people. I agree. It needs more. Do you suck dicks? Steers <laughs> <laughs> and queers. So who said that? Who the fuck said that? Yeah, yeah. So oh, a leg. And wouldn't it be a surprise if it was Colin Firth's leg? <laughs> <laughs> he just cuts and he's like, I'm in this movie. Because it really. Oh, here we go. Acid on the face, you and know, they're gone. You know, it kind of reminds me of the snot gag from Zoom. <laughs> yeah, that too. Zoom, yeah. but did, did that have acid snot? No, I don't think that, so. That just had uh, whatever it was made out of. Uh, Chevy Chase was immune to it. Mm, now, look at this scene here. Uh, Celia Emery is going to be attacked by a guy, and and uh, her approach to defend herself is just to stand there with a candle. And I think that's sweet. And then, oh, he gets dropped down a shaft. By Candle Rick. and wine, it looks like, right? Well, you know, she's, she's got a night ahead of her. Yeah. So, Lauren, you watched this film, hadn't properly seen it before. Did you, did you have any expectations of what was going to happen? Especially from the title. The Legend of Fritten's Gold. That immediately is like... I thought it wouldn't be set in the school as much. I actually thought they'd be, like, travelling around looking for the gold. Oh, did you not see the title? Said Trinians too. <laughs> yes, but, like, you know, going on a school trip or an excursion oh, and see, finding out they've got to go and solve I, this mystery. I didn't consider that, actually. What? The whole excursion thing. I didn't consider that. But, but it just makes sense because it's a school... Uh, yeah. But, I mean, the thing that it ma- immediately made me think of is, and I've only seen the end of this film, the City Slickers, the search for, what's his face's gold? Curly's gold? Curly's gold, yeah. And, like, I remember at the end of that film, they were, like, in a mine or something, like, looking for a gold that they'd heard about, and it was, like, ancient, not ancient treasure, but treasure from previous generations. So yeah. I was like, well, clearly there's, they've established the Fritten family's this... Uh, well, I mean, we've only heard it from Camilla that the Fritten family is sort of prestigious in her eyes, so maybe they do have some kind of gold that was once hidden by a previous generation. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, I really like this sequence here. I think this is the real encapsulation of what this movie's about, where they sing the theme song in this menacing way and they're ready to, like, but wreak honestly, havoc. They're would, defenders would it, would of it, anarchy. Wouldn't... The um, intruders hear that. Well, that, like, that, that's why they literally. That's, I think that's the point. That was, that's the point. They're being ensnared into the trap. It's like when you ring a bell and then a cat jumps and you kick it. You like. You know, oh, here we go. Here's the guitar. It's and sweet. it's a Spinal Tap reference. My favorite type of reference is nothing but a Spinal Tap reference. Yay. Yay! And they're dead. Like, you know, have you ever been killed by guitar being played real loud? I would have loved it if one of them did not move like and he just took off his balaclava and it actually was like Beethoven no I was gonna say (laughs) Beethoven no I was gonna say it's like a rock star like Mick Jagger or someone and they're just like Steve Tyler (laughs) what? Steve Tyler oh Steve Tyler no Bono because Bono's established in this universe and they're like Mate, what do you think you're doing? And they just walk over and grab the tie and teach him how to play real (laughs) (laughs) how good would that have been? now this movie has a lot going on, Lauren. So, like like I said, so you thought it would be more outside of the school. You thought Centrinians 2, The Legend of Fritten's Gold, would be more of a school excursion. Is that right? Yeah. What about you, Bartek? Well, I didn't have the same thought, but I'm surprised that I didn't, because that's actually really good logic. Mm. Um, I mean, I would think that if if I was going with the whole notion of there's gold hidden somewhere... Maybe it wouldn't be in the school, because in the previous film, you know, they went to places outside of the school. Mm. So I would think that, yeah, maybe the first film they justified as, we've seen enough of the school, let's have that just kind of be the home base, and they'll go out to various places. Yeah, with this, there's a point in in the movie where they're finding out where the gold is, and it's zooming in on England, and I'm like, oh, please don't let it be the school. I was really happy that this movie was smarter then my gut instinct, like, you know, even though I know this movie, these film, this film series is intelligent, witty, fun, there's still that knee-jerk reaction of watching an unappreciated masterpiece that makes you go, oh, there's going to be this dumb reason 
and that's why it's an unappreciated masterpiece. But no, this film really took a left turn to my expectations, and I think that's what I also like about it more than the first one. The first one didn't have many twists or turns. Mm-hmm. It was fairly straightforward. It was the com. It was it was the attitude that was the twist. Like you didn't expect this teen girl heist movie to be so. You know, so in your face. Yeah, the first film had more of a mind games thing going on. Like, what's mm. he gonna do next? What are we gonna do? More Death Note. And also, yeah, yeah, Lauren. The first film, film was the first film was Death Note. This film has less gobby related humor, which is a downside. If I'm one hundred percent honest, because they do yeah. reference that one of the great women was someone who was famous for giving a gobby, Ryan. So give it. She was that. also a good secretary, so I guess you know. <laughs> yeah. Now here's David Tennant in his first real scene. Lauren, how did you feel about this? Because he's really David Tennanting it up a lot, but with the grey hair. My, to quote ovaries. my notes, what did I write? Mm, what did your ovaries say? My ovaries said... Yay! Impregnate um, me! Great entrance, apparently. Um, bang, what an entry. Bang. Tennant what is entry. a badass. Um, is he, though? I, know, I, I actually wrote ass. down, because he explains his friends with Bono. Yeah. And I was like, that would be a great spin-off potential. So Piers Pomfrey and his friends. Yeah, Pomfrey and Friends. Yeah. <laughs> the book for kids. Well, he doesn't get killed off at the end, so there's still a chance. Uh, I cannot wait to talk about the end of this movie. <laughs> I have a lots of feelings about this movie and how... Well, I don't want to spoil it, but I think this movie's unappreciated because of the end it takes. Yeah, I mean, we've already said that the part, the ancestor's a woman, but we haven't said the other part. Oh, the other the part? The other part made even me The other part wild. that David Tennant knew the whole time and yeah. still did not figure anything out. <laughs> yeah. So, David, so we have many, many characteristics going on. There's different cliques. And what I think I like about this one, too, is... The clicks really clash with each other a lot more in this. Like, yeah. I didn't feel like there was a cohesive of a team, as in the first movie, where they're more cohesive because they're kind of against an enemy. And that can also be applied to our main girl of uh, uh, Tallulah Riley, because they were kind of against her as well. Not like, not, not fully. It was but more they like were they were kind of, hazing. Her. Yeah, they were united against her in a hazing process, and then united against. Colin Firth and mm. and the other schools, but in this they they're really clashing heads, and it's up to Tallulah Riley's character as the head girl to unite them, mm. like I imagine Gemma Arterton did, and I think that's a really good message for young girls. Well, they even have callbacks of like when she tries to whistle and it doesn't do anything. Yeah, this film's really her character arc is learning how to whistle. Her first character arc in the first film was conformity, and in this one, it's emulating. Mm. So, we haven't talked about the missing cog in this film. Oh, that brand of humour that we're missing. Russell Brand is not in this movie. And I really feel the lack of his presence. And I'll be 100% honest, it wasn't until the exorcism scene... Yeah, there's an exorcism scene. (laughs) Oh, yeah, that's right. (laughs) ...that I really went, hey, yeah, Russell Brand's not in this movie. That's a bit way through the movie, but... I really felt the lack of his presence, and I really would have liked it if Gemma Arterton was working... Spoiler alert, she works for MI7... I already said that, MI7. MI7, which is apparently, if you look it up, the propaganda It's like propaganda and censorship branch. Yeah, so uh, she's working for the propaganda branch of the government, and I really would have liked it if it cut to her. Like, you know, how good was it that she's hanging upside down doing the Mission Impossible cutting of the stuff and wouldn't it be great if you had the camera in this angle where you just see her and then it moves and Russell Brand's like back to back with her and they're both secret agents I would really want <laughs> Russell Brand and Gemma Arterton's like Avengers that's basically what I'm saying is I'd watch the Avengers with them too the British Avengers oh, not, yeah. not the shitty American one we're not talking about superheroes mate we're talking about super women and men called Russell Brand and Gemma Arterton Mm-hmm. Right? They're so good, they're not even a man or woman. They're women and men. They represent both genders perfectly. All of them. I mean, he used to be married to Katy Perry, so, you know. I he really Katie represents Perry. all men. Hmm? I love Katy Perry. Do you? Mm-hmm. Because we don't. Because if we were in this world, we would be a part of the David Tennant Society <laughs> where we hate all women. And that's why this we have you what, on, Lauren. This is, this is where I wrote Time Lord Society. No, this is where I wrote Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> I was like, oh, the Klan are in this. 
Now, I really thought of what I wrote for this sequence is no homers. We can have one. <laughs> like, you know, you can't have more than one. Now, Bartek, when we entered this secret society, it answers a lot of questions. I of... quit pretty soon after, but yes, we did enter it. When we entered the society, and it answers a lot of questions about what's going on with David Tennant's whole character. Um, did it make you feel good to have somewhat of an understanding of where, where, what he's doing, where he's coming from, and how it kind of matched up with his previous uh, ancestors' goals? Well, it told us immediately that um, the society basically revolves around misogynism, and immediately there, that puts a bunch of characterization into him that we can later see and say, yep, that fits with what we learnt in that one scene. Nailed it. Thanks for nodding, Ryan. It's a very good visual... I was yawning. So it was <laughs> yawning because your speech was so powerful. Um, no, so David Tennant's a sexist in this, Lauren. Does that really alter your feelings for him in any way? No, because I know he's just acting. Are but, you sure? Oh, he's just pretending. He's infiltrated. Here's society. a fun fact. There is no David Tennant. It is only Pomfrey. He's an, <laughs> he pretends to be David Tennant to s- snare you in. And this is his autobiographical piece. Look, I am a big, big Doctor Who fan. You know, fellow humans unite. Um, but even I could tell that this was not the David Tennant we all love. No, that's right. He's he's a sexist in this, and then he will later go on to play Kilgrave, a rapist. So he's really working his way up the ists. <laughs> Lauren, what's his next ist role? Geologist. Fuck yeah. No, he did Hamlet. Hamlet? With the Royal Shakespeare Company. No, but we're not asking what he's already done. We're not saying what's his next ist oh. role. So he's played... Are you paying attention, Lauren? <laughs> this is Centrally in 2. Yes. you really got to be on the ball with this one, okay? Because evidently, the population of the world, we're not. I feel like I wasted my geologist joke. He, no. I was asking, so he's played a sexist mm-hmm. and a rapist. Oh, what's his next what's ist, ist role? role? <laughs> he said geologist. I'm just going to say, <laughs> I'm going to say therapist, because eventually he's going to be playing Hannibal Lecter in the future, I imagine. <laughs> Lauren, you going to contribute? Um, Embarrassment. <laughs> Embarrassed. Now, see, guys. No, no, no. Because of Lauren, you can now. I will be okay if you rate our iTunes score four out of five. <laughs> <laughs> no, meteorologist. Ah, oh, so a weatherman. We've already had Chevy Chase do that on the show, Lauren. In Snow Day. You know what would be really good? I'd love to see David Tennant play like a dad. Like a, like a really boring middle-aged dad where he doesn't tell any dad jokes. He's just that dad in those like 1980s movies where he's holding like a plate of bacon and he's just like, hey, don't ride your bike out too late. I'd love to see him play a normal human role. It would just be interesting to see. Like I love these photos where they photoshopped David Tennant in and the best, the best one is when they have it with Colin Firth. Who's in the movie? In set, look here it is, <laughs> and they've photoshopped him in next to Colin Firth. So it's like, could they not get them in the same room for this photo? I guess not. You know why? Colin Firth was too busy trying to get an Oscar. Mm. When did he get his Oscar? Two thousand and eleven. Two I remember, years. I saw that film on a date, so I remember the year. I saw this. I saw that movie too. I really loved Centrinians Three. Oscar winning movie for <laughs> Colin oh, Firth. Century and Street Battle. Oh, here we go. And here, here he is. is Firth. Look at this actor here in the background that's out of focus. I mean, he is so good. And he is in focus now. I'm really happy for him. He's really elevated his performance. Now he's gone. And he's gone. But wait, he gives us an emotional line of he's dialogue back. where he points out that they're brown, Lauren. Like, mm. like are your eyes brown? I can't tell. You're all the way over here. No, nah, I still can't tell. They're, they're green and hazel. But, so they go, they're fucking four colours, Lauren. Uh, are you sure they're not brown? Because Rupert Everett's character of Fritton here, they're brown. And you're the Fritton of our group. Oh, Bartek's the, the, the Colin Firth of our group in this situation. Because are, I you? Well are, you, are, you, are you Russell Brand or David Tennant? I'm clearly Mr. Darcy. The dead dog <laughs> in the first one. Stop pumping me. <laughs> so. Come here, 
No, it's just Millie. He never really calls her Camilla that much. It's Millie. He does call her Camilla. It's mm. Millie or Miller. Miller. He calls her Camilla at times. Fuck you, Bartek. I'm Colin Firth. Oh, fuck you, Oscar winning Colin Firth. We Get are, back to Kingsman, David. We are at you were war so with, good in that movie. We are at war with Germany. Is that his line from Kingsman? I'm pretty sure. I know it. I like the ending of that movie because he's giving this grim speech, but everyone's happy because he made the speech. What, Colin Firth and Kingsman? In what, the one where he's the king, not the Kingsman. Yeah, the Kingsman. No, the king. The king's speech. Oh, Elvis's speech. Yeah, I know that film you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Lawrence is shaking her head in disappointment that I'm not really... Geologist. That I'm not really acknowledging that the real king of rock and roll is Jerry Lee Lewis. You're right. I'm sorry. So, this is a scene where only this type of movie can do it. And I'll give you a spoiler. This is not my favourite scene in the movie that's about to happen where she gets possessed by... <laughs> whose grave are they at? They're, I at they're at a fritten grave. Just a fritten? I think it's that reverend that Rupert we saw. No, Rupert but it's a pirate. It's a pirate. I thought, I thought it was the Fritten that like owns the gold. No, because their whole thing at the start was we don't know what happened to him. No one ever yeah. saw him again. So, so why would he have be, a grave? He, he must be at like a soonish ancestor. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of missed the boat on this one, but it's not the priest because he's a pirate. Well, you missed a the ship then, Ryan. No, it could be a boat too, you know, calm down. We don't know if his pirate ship was proper or not. be a shitty not. pirate, go ahead, Ryan, you can miss the boat. But this guy wasn't the pirate king legend of the Fritten family, Jesus. True, doesn't have to get a boat, he can get a ship. Bartek? Lesser men have had ships. Boat tech, calm down. <laughs> Why'd you have to tell them, Ryan? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, bar ship, calm down. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, bar ship... So, what I was going to say was, he, she gets possessed by a pirate. Rob Slewinski. <laughs> I'm trying to come up with a... She gets possessed by a pirate? That's not my favourite scene in the movie, surprisingly. As much as I do love The Exorcist, done with modern-day English girls in short skirts. Schoolgirls, be, be fair, Ryan. Private school girls. Private school girls. Lauren, when you were in an old girl's private school, what happened? Well, you know, there's what a... happened? Elaborate. No, just what happened. <laughs> just what happened? We went to school. No, but like, what happened? What happened when there was an exorcism? Yeah, what <laughs> happened when you had to go find the legend of Curly's gold? Like, what happened when your school had to go to school challenge? You know? No, we didn't do school challenge or anything like that. So your private school is what is that animal? <laughs> Which animal? That came out of the hat. I saw it last. It night. was either a moth or a, or a giant beetle. It was actually David Tennant. It's an ancient moth. <laughs> it's 420 years old. That's not ancient. That's just really old. I know, I know. You got me there. I got you, fucking ship tech. So, uh, uh, bar ship. no, it could be any variant I want. It could be boat ship, if all I care. <laughs> so, Lauren, that's, what that's happened inbred, at... That's right? That's inbred. So, what was, like, the most notorious <laughs> thing to happen? Yeah. Did all the girls... <laughs> did some of the girls work as sex workers for important male people? Not that I'm aware of. That means I did, Ryan, yes. <laughs> How do you think Kevin Rudd got to be Prime Minister in Australia in <laughs> 2007? It was all Lauren. Wouldn't you have been in, like, year eight at that time? Yes, I was in so, year, year eight, year nine. Old enough. <laughs> See, the worst thing that happened in our old boys' school was that we had this guy intrude. He, he would have been in year seven. No. In 2007? Year eight, year nine. Not nine. Year 8. Uh, Would have been year 8. Go on, buddy. The worst thing that happened in our old guy school was that in, in our year 12, a guy who wasn't a student at the school was given a uniform by someone, and that meant that he was able to sneak in, punch a guy. <laughs> You've told me this. Yeah, punch a guy, and the guy bled on the library floor and ran away, and like news crews were like harassing our school for ages. About it. Uh, for one and, to two days. And Wait. our friend of the show, Nathan Malloy, he wanted he really wanted to walk by one of the cameras and say, Wow, only one beating this week. This is a new record. <laughs> <laughs> and then just get expelled. <laughs> yeah, they really didn't want anyone to talk to the news crews. So that's piss poor, mate. I mean, my school, far out. I mean, we weren't all private like you two with your singular genders who are that yeah. forward and our not being rural rural 
The rural. 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 There you go. Lauren said it the best. Rural. <laughs> Bloody Ryan, his now, rule, you mean, rule In place. this scene, I bet you guys missed this, but her name is Georgiana. That is a Pride and Prejudice reference. I did get that reference. I didn't get did that Did you get reference. the reference that she's probably only eight years old and has a severe <laughs> drinking problem from six years ago? You didn't get that reference, did you? Because Celia Embry looks like she's about 42 years old, but <laughs> she's got the height of a seven-year-old. <laughs> And then 42 is a bit pushing, isn't it? Is this, it? <laughs> this reminds me of uh, The Simpsons Barney's film. Uh, don't cry for me because I'm already, cause I'm already yeah, dead. Yeah, that one, because he ha- he goes to a uh, a meeting like this, but it turns out to be a Girl Scout meeting. Yeah, Barney's film had a lot of heart, but football to the groin had a football to the groin. No, I like the fact that they're placing with the idea that Colin Firth's character was always a damaged individual, not because of the events of the first film. Because of love. Because love. His heart was broken, Lauren. Was your heart ever broken? What? Lauren? Has my heart ever been broken? Yeah. Have yes. You bro- Have you met me, Ryan? I don't know. Who <laughs> broke your heart? Have you broken a heart? I'm not revealing that on a podcast. <laughs> I like she you puts her hand over the microphone like it's going to make a difference. <laughs> like, oh, that stopped the recording process. <laughs> Lauren's heart was broken when a young man named Fritten <laughs> stole her pirate ship and demanded to become one of the greatest people in history. No, Ryan. No, Lauren. Ryan, don't you remember the Our Tuxedo episode where she cried? <laughs> Lauren's cried many a times. So, we are entering a new realm of cinema now with this. We, we've done movies on the show where they've made references to other movies, for sure. But we haven't done straight out kind of spoof movies, I guess. And this is kind of getting to like parody spoof now with like this movie yeah. makes a lot of just straight Wasn't out. Wasn't you film. one though a spoof? No, it was just a smart idea of what if we did the Old Testament but with outsider perspective of cavemen like characters. It wasn't spoofing anything. Yeah, it's. No, it's just a comedy. It, well, it, it didn't spoof other movies, we'll put no. it that way. It but just... it, it, it was kind of poking fun at a literary uh, aspect of a religion, in a way. Kind of. But when this movie enters The Exorcist, for example, it really sets a tone for things to come. I feel like this is really... The exorcism scene really makes you understand where this world works. Like, this is a world that works where later on they go to a boys' school dressed up as boys. That was my favourite scene. I'm not going to lie. I'm glad that you thought that. (laughs) And you don't even question that they're clearly girls because you've already seen someone be possessed. So I guess it's okay. Well, even if I didn't see the exorcism scene, I'd I'd probably be alright with it. Mm. Who is the best looking boy? I don't know. There were a lot, Ryan. They were like at, at one of point. Them. I think they said that one of them they mistook one of them for a yeah. Boy. I so. no. I think that one was just a lesbian, and she just wanted to admit it in that moment that she had. There was a trivia scissoring point. fetish. There was a trivia point for the first film that one of the deleted scenes had one of the posh toddies say that she'd be all right with hitting on a woman. Well, uh, yeah, that's cool. I think this chick here, the t- top nerd, made a pretty good man. I think it was the large breasts that really gave it away, though, that she was not, in fact, oh, a man. The large man boobs, right? Those were the man, man boobs, boobs right? Lauren, with the bra. No. I mean, it was, a, it was a... What's that Seinfeld thing? A bro? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Lauren, David Tennant's only in five to seven scenes in this movie. Were, you, were your heart broken about that? Yes. So he did break your heart, we found out. <laughs> you got her oh, no. You didn't even think oh, about no. it. Oh no, my secret's revealed. <laughs> I don't have a heart. <laughs> so Either that or she's fooled us, Ryan. She's Penn and Teller. She fooled us both. <laughs> Bullshit. Yeah, that's also another show that they had. You're right. That's the reference. Uh, Lauren, which clique would you be a member of? At that at oh, Centurion. Oh, jeez. Um, it's clearly geeks, but we'll let it go. Well, yes, my nickname was Hermione in in. Did in you nickname university. yourself that? Hmm? At university? Yes. No one called you that, Lauren. I was there. 
You called yourself a You were mommy. only in a maximum of one to two classes per trimester, Ryan. When there were only two drama units for us to do. So, I was in your units. Go on. Silence. Just silence, <laughs> Lauren. She's dumbfounded. How dare you fucking meth her, Ryan? <laughs> Which click are you in, Bartek? You asked this of me last week and I didn't think I had a proper answer, but you know what? Now that they've introduced a new click in this film, I have more things to think about. You know what click I'm in? You, Ryan, sir, are clearly an emo. No, I'm in my <laughs> own click, just like Roxy. <laughs> I'll be in your click too, just to make sure you're not lonely. Now, this sequence here is so great because they did not at any point discuss that they were going to do this. It just yes. happened. Yes, I actually wrote down my notes said, oh, we're going to a boys' school now? And actually... then I realised later, oh, why? It's girls dressed as boys. They should have gone to my school. Wait, Lauren, you didn't know that these were girls? <laughs> Are you kidding Not me? Not at the start. I was like, oh, are okay. You, are you kidding me? Bro, that's how good this movie is. One of them has a moustache. <laughs> yeah, that's how good this movie is. <laughs> this movie's so good that it fools you into, like, look, look this girl has long hair. Clearly is a girl. What a boy. Ryan. Where's a tie? Ryan, we're not watching it. the film with sound at the moment. If they clearly could be boys. Yeah. And you know all the boys in high school at this age that had all the facial hair? You know, all of them, Bartek. I so, definitely did. Did you? This yeah. this boy really pissed polished. me off. The actual boy in this scene. I really thought he was an actor that I knew, and then I looked he... him up, and I was really disappointed. He really wasn't. What other movies has he been in? Because uh, no. he looks familiar, and he... I've watched I've watched Riot Club. Ah. And he looks like a character out of that, and that I kind haven't of seen that, Lauren. But like, you know oh. what I did see. His ears don't fit in that hat too well. Are you sure he wasn't the sheriff in Flipper? What, Isaac Hayes? <laughs> well, that was Isaac Hayes, wasn't it? No, this kid is not Isaac Hayes. He, he And he has an instant disliking of the guy. He the reminds girl. me of one of the characters from Vampire Academy. The the redhead guy. That I was thinking that as well, are. yeah. Now, Juno Temple... Juno Temple was clearly a girl. Fucking earrings. <laughs> Like, the earrings uh, give it away. <laughs> like, that's the best part. I'm like, you're wearing earrings. And then I realised, they're all wearing earrings. <laughs> Not the geek. No, the geek's wearing little earrings. Really? Yeah. Yeah, she's wearing little earrings. Like, in that shot you saw just a moment ago, in the sun, they were reflecting. And I'm like, I, God. I guess this kind of goes back to another level of that whole joke we were talking about last week, where there's a man playing a woman. Mm. Now... My favourite sequence is about to come up. Or it goes back to the sorority boys joke. Yeah, the boys that are from a sorority. The joke that nobody notices that they're clearly guys. Now, this is my favourite sequence. <laughs> <laughs> Could you... Oh, with the chav, right? Can you guess why? Um, I mean, in only this type of cinema can you have the only <laughs> Yeah. You would not see a scene like this in the 1950s. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Ryan's got his hand and his Ryan's other hand on his face. <laughs> this is He's the so most red like a of comedy that I've ever seen. In only this type of movie can the solution to a problem be rap. <laughs> and not only rap beatboxing it makes it so 2009 like yeah this beatbox- is how Ali G would solve a problem <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't even solve it like this he wouldn't even this solve it like this this legit freaked me out I'm not gonna lie the That's- beatboxing <laughs> is, that, is that a child or dwarf actor <laughs> I actually was not too sure I'm- I thought it was a child but it's a child dressed but look, up but look at it look at it I thought is that a dwarf actor because if you paint him up you don't know Look, well, I, well, yeah. In that case, got... we can't answer the question, but I really think it's a child. I think it's a dwarf because factor. this film has already—it's Peter Dinklage, damn it! This is before these... Game of Thrones. He had to do something with his life. These F I hockey stick M S's. I can't spell that much. Go on. These films have already established that there are crazy children. Oh, sorry, there are interesting children at this school and. I feel like an interesting child would dress up as a stereotypically looking tribal person and do some ooga booga. It's voodoo class. Voodoo class? That is what she said. We are good voodoo classes paying off. I'm like, god damn it is. Now, now, here's Here's something I really liked about this whole sequence of the boys. 
when it opened up, I thought, oh, is this Colin Firth after he got rehabbed? Like, you know, like, they're showing the shoes and the suit, yeah. and I'm like, oh, it's him. And then it's like, oh, no, it's not him. <laughs> okay, I guess we're still going to wait for a while for him to come back. Because wouldn't it be easier if he just went, went in as the Minister of Education and just got it? <laughs> Did you not think of that? No. So, what are you going to say, Lauren? You're feeling a lot of emotions. What was I saying? Oh, a bit of foreshadowing in this. Yeah, there's a principle. Section. Yeah. What's the foreshadowing? Um, who's the painting of? Oh, it's a painting of the principal. You're right. I got it. Now it. <laughs> it's really interesting that this principal guy. I really wanted it to be played by Rupert Everett as well. Like, <laughs> so I knew that Everett is every school teaching official other than Colin Firth. So. Here's a nerd in your face. Oh, we didn't even talk about the in your face. Mm. In your face. It's so good because in the first comedy movie of this, it didn't linger on comedy moments. If anything, it was really fast paced. But this movie said, hey, you know what? The first movie didn't do as well. And I think that's because we were too fast. Let's slow down. Fast like these girls leaving. Yeah, and let's slow... Yeah, I was really surprised that the whole school went after them. Yeah. Especially the cricket team. No, Out of I my was way. more shocked the choir right now. Oh, them. God. Oh, Ryan's favourite scene part two. They were too busy <laughs> beatboxing. And the best part is their beatboxing physically stops the principal and the other boys. <laughs> For a second. <laughs> For the, you know what I love? The priest or the, the choir... The guy in charge of the choir. Master. Yeah, the boy. Uh, the brother... He he, he stops to he's joined in fully. Like at no point he's was he like, "Who do you think you are, beatboxing in my choir, boy? I don't even know you. What's your name? I don't recognize your dick in my mouth. Get out of here." That was uh, a Catholic school reference. Yes, I'm aware of that. Did you go to a Catholic school? Yes. But you're not a boy. <gasps> Well, she's a Saint Trinian. You just realise that, huh? She's a Saint Trinian, then. They isn't their school Catholic? Yeah, they have nuns later on. I saw Mm, nuns. No, they are Catholic because in the first movie they make it out like their Spanish teachers are nun. Yeah. So what's your whole deal against Lauren? Do you just want to abort this joke and just keep? No, I was saying mainly in Catholic schools, it's the boys get that get sexually assaulted and molested by Ah, the priests. Ah, it was me, not Lauren. I yeah, it's you with your oppressed sexual urges from priests. I Mm. agree. Now, wouldn't it have been great if the ring was in all the locations that she just pointed Mm. to? Like they had to go through a world trek. To get the ring, like it's been broken into like fifteen pieces. No. Can't tell if it's more adventure movie or like video game. Well, <laughs> it's more Lord of the Rings, which obviously makes a comparison here, because it's like one ring they have to find, the one to rule them all. I really, and then obviously references to Lord of the Rings happens later in the movie. That was the best part too. Not as good as the beatbox thing. I will be honest. Not Here the- we go. <laughs> First is back. Earth is back. And he scrubs up quite nice, but I actually said to myself, I don't know, he still looks like a bag of shit. His hair's kind of roughly in his... Not as shaved He's as not he wearing like. a tie. I love the slight slow-mo yeah. for the dog. <laughs> <laughs> and then it stops. <laughs> no, I don't know if it's the copy I watched. I don't know if you guys had this, but... In my copy of this movie, the music was a lot louder than the dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> so there were times where it's like, thanks, subtitles. Did your copy of what one you watched have a similar issue? I want to know if in this movie they mine, just didn't level mine it. Mine had a similar issue. <laughs> Good. I didn't notice it if it did. Well, that's a yes, then. Two out of three ain't bad. All right. Two out of three people I've had a noticed, hearing problem. I've just noticed Fritten's scarf. Yeah, it's got skulls. skulls on it. In the first movie, what was it? She had a little chain across her waist that said something like... Bling. Bling. <laughs> I think that's what I la- feel lacking in this movie is the Fritten outfits aren't as cool. Like, she doesn't have the, mm. print, oh, the Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Elizabeth <laughs> slash uh, Victoria outfit. Mm. In this, you get another humping dog, at least. Heathcliff. Is that a reference to Pride and Prejudice? No, no that's, that's a reference to Cat. 
No, it's reference to Tessa de Urbaville. Oh, everyone's on a different level here. It's a reference to itself. This movie doesn't need to reference <laughs> anything else. It is referencing its own history. Heathcliff in the original Trinian's movie was probably a character. Don't know. I didn't look it up. But if I say it with enough conviction, maybe you'll believe it. God bless Ryan. Oh, look, Roxy's in the movie. Again, my hand. Gemma and, Arterton. And a wig. Mm-hmm. Now... Thanks, Lauren. <laughs> so, Lauren, what were some of the interesting notes you made throughout this film? Um, nom, 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 mm-hmm. nom nom, my favorite. Oh, when no. they had yes, earlier, they had the riddle, piddle, whittle joke. Like, oh, don't take yeah. the piss. Oh, also, I started talking about the symbol in the middle. Like, is it an eye or is it's it an a eye. Vag- or is it a vagina? Or is it... Lauren, stop looking for vaginas in movies. Vagina You're not going to see glo- it. It's a vagina with a globe in the middle. <laughs> it's a clit that's really big. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, if the globe's in the middle. But if the men... You know how they say men have a hard time trying to find the clit? Well, <laughs> this is well that, them was, that was a subplot of the South Park movie, right? Yeah, this is a movie where they're saying the evil secret society of men are like, we don't have a problem, look how big it is! <laughs> <laughs> We're totally fine with it. We're totally fine with it. It wouldn't be tight, but you know. Yeah, I mean, you know, are we going to lick it? No, that's gross. And then I started, I wrote about Big Brother and then the Illuminati. Oh, and... they're the same. Yeah. Did you know that, Bartek? Big Brother is the Illuminati. I, I know that now. Or is the eye a symbol of ancient Egypt? Okay, first of all, these the ladies in this scene aren't even dressed up as men. So wouldn't the men actually notice? Like he's like, oh, who's looking? Are at- you wearing lipstick? And they're like, oh shit. They're looking at each other's asses though. Yeah, they they don't look each other in the eyes. Also, fun fact, I wish I looked this up, but I swear to you that one of the kinsmen here, not kingsmen, kinsmen, sitting next to Colin Firth when he's slugging alcohol, looks like the bank manager guy from, from the, the first, first movie. Does he have the lips and everything? I'm pretty sure, so I need you, Bartek, to look at this for me when he comes Is up. Is he going to be, like, to the counterclockwise or clockwise? He'll be on the left-hand side of this, uh, like on the screen. His left or...? His right, our left. Okay. But he'll be very prominent because he's in the frame. All right. Uh, but it's very interesting. That would be good continuity. I would well, reference. It would actually be pretty good. I like this scene here, like you said, Lord, are you wearing limps- lipstick? Wouldn't it be great if they just stood there and went... Yeah, why should women be allowed to repress our urge to wear makeup, right? Ugh. Actually, Not it, would be, sure. it would be pretty cool if all of the uh, cultists, I'll just call them cultists, were like minor characters the in the first film. Kinsmen? Kinsmen. <laughs> That's why I really wanted Toby Jones to be there. <laughs> like, if the guy who had, like, the drinking problem because he went to St. Trinian's, if he was there and... Oh, my God, that would be really good. Yeah, like, if all of those, like, minor characters but, like, are memorable in some way could be there, that'd be cool. And Stephen Fry's there. <laughs> You're mem- Oh, but he was playing himself, sir. So and he's gay, so... Extra level. Yeah. Of subtext there. Oh, look, they did the infiltration trope of taking off their disguise. Hey, Lauren, it's been, like, 40 minutes since we've seen David Tennant. I know! How do you feel? I I need my tenant fix. David Tennant has my favourite lines of dialogue in the movie, though. I will be honest. And it's very good. Does he uh, beatbox, Ryan? Though? If only he beatbox. He does David Tennant stammer, though. <laughs> That's David Tennant's acting style. Play. <laughs> I know. I watch Doctor Who. <laughs> Thank you. Woohoo! <laughs> I thought you were going to be like real obscure, and be, real obscure and be like, yeah, I watched him in Fright Night, the remake with <laughs> Now, here's where my Star Trek fan got out. I'm like, Vulcan Death Grip. Death Grip? Fuck you. That's not... Stand back, Ryan. Stand back. <laughs> oh, fucking... Not very happy with oh, that. Oh, look. He's Tenant. Oh, okay, uh, is this the scene, Ryan? Oh, the... yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in this sequence here... A character looks... Ve- an actor looks very similar, and I hope it is the same actor who played this guy here with the nose. Oh, my God, he does look very similar. <laughs> yeah. Am I right? He really looks like the bank manager guy from the first movie, and it would really be cool if it was. That would be a really neat... Look, see? He really he looks... Does really look like him. <laughs> I'm hoping it's him. I really... I want to be correct. <laughs> I really wish I looked it up properly before we did this, because he was such a minor character. I wrote in my notes... 
bank manager guy. He was <laughs> prominent enough in the first one to be like credited on IMDb. So his his story one of a darker nature where he they didn't actually own money, but this secret male society. Because in this movie too, they bring up the idea that this society toppled. Uh, Colin Firth. Yeah. They're like, he's like, he brought my downfall. It's like, didn't you have in sex? Have and opening a window yeah. topple your downfall? Like, I think if you didn't and do also, that, and also also kicking um Mr. Darcy. Wow, that was that death. was clearly the dog's fault. Dogs should not be humping Colin Firth. We know that now. But he's developed as a character because he didn't kick Heathcliff. So no, no, exactly. But Heathcliff's a heavier dog. <laughs> oh, so he thought like I can't take him. I really like this sequence here, where they've terminated all these famous women, and all and then even the nerds are like, I don't know who these people are. <laughs> like this idea that this cult has uh, managed to wipe out powerful women. Mm. Lauren, how did this make you? F- how did this whole idea of this evil sexist society make you feel as a woman? Threatened. Threatened? Threatened. You want to elaborate there, or just one word response? Just, just one word well, response. Look, as a famous celebrity, Lauren would feel threatened, Ryan. Yeah, you know Lauren's famous celebrity. She's a famous celebrity. She's, she's Hermione. Like, she's Hermione, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's what everyone called her at university. All no people. <laughs> Get one person who called you that on this podcast. And I'd love to have an hour-long interview about that. With it's them. the other Ryan who you've been trying to get on. Sure, for the past sure, year. sure. I don't think he ever called you that. He totally did. No one called you that, Lauren. You know what they did call you? Law Dog. You called me that. See, someone called you something. <laughs> I call her Lauren. I call her. I call her the Law Dog. In my, she's out in my phone. Lauren's phone number is uh, zero four one two. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Lauren, look at me like you memorized it. I was right, no, you, you were, were really saying off my there. one. <laughs> Everyone's number starts with zero four one two in Australia, at least. I know, but it's still nerving. Oh, look, the nerds have technology, and now this is where Colin Firth gets on a speech. Now, did you think he truly turned here, or did you know that it was a piece of deception? I thought it was. Drunk. I just thought he was drunk, to be honest. Well, <laughs> clearly you're not used to Colin Firth as an actor. He's always drunk. But is he doing it on purpose? What he's saying? No, he's got. He's just going rogue. I don't think he's a bad boy. Didn't, I think didn't think he was a bad I boy. I think he was a naughty boy, but not a bad boy. You know what I'm talking about? Just, he was definitely I, naughty, but he wasn't bad. I he just felt like I just really felt that he had a broken heart here, and he was just expressing himself. I also thought he looked really fat in this scene for some reason. I think the cloaks do not show off his figure. David Tennant looks like he's ready to Punch him. seriously act. Mm. These were outtakes of David Tennant in between waiting to act in a movie. He's like, when do I get to act? That is my job. I'm an actor. Uh, okay. like This movie was when I was like, I was like, I was a big fan of David Tennant. And that's like, why you I did wanted not to see marry it. him, I'm pretty sure. And this is why you did not see it until now. Because yeah. you knew that you couldn't handle him being so vile and villainous. <laughs> Am I right? Probably. Now, does David Tennant look like a lizard to you? Don't ruin this illusion for me, please. But it's like, you know how some people look like animals? David Tennant reminds me of a lizard. I hope he reminds you of a lizard, too. He reminds me more of a meerkat. Nah, a I, lizard. Ryan, I'm with you with the whole Ben Stiller one. I'm not really sure about this one. But Ben Stiller looks like a monkey, an ape. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Owen Wilson looks just happy to be there. And David Tennant looks like a lizard. I don't know. Maybe I need to have another look. Yeah, you need to look at the the, the eyes. It's the eyes. <gasps> but the then David... you can't say in Harry Potter he looks like a lizard because of the whole tongue thing he had going there on. There you go. Well, see? To be fair, he had a mad eye in Harry Potter. Oh, get it? She's yeah. a dog. Mm. Now. <laughs> that, that was the level of commentary we've gotten to now. So <laughs> I was very shocked by your line. What, that she had a dog? Yeah. Not that the statue right there, the bust, Love is of the original Fritton. Love is a many splendid thing. Are you just singing now? We can't afford the copyright for that song. <laughs> Did I sound too close to... Yeah, you have to get it more off. I... Should I do the whitey version then? No. <laughs> uh, so, Lauren, this is really the last time we see Colin Firth in the movie. Mm. 
Like, we see him again. Well, I mean, we do have the Romeo and Juliet scene. (gasps) Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Now, another thing I did not expect was a sword fight from Colin Firth, to be honest, (laughs) in this movie. But boy, did I really need it. Yeah, but this was the last week. I love the fact that doubloons is a word. Doubloons. Yeah, it's 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 an old word, but... I like how that's something you like. Like, Mm. I like that. It's a word. I like words. I like... Well, Lamb. Just, well, Ryan, to be fair, the word has the bloon in it. That sounds kind of funny. Like Orlando it? Bloom, who no, was no, in no, Three bloom, Musketeers. This is bloon. Yeah. Sybil. Jadoon platoon upon the moon. <gasps> that was a Doctor Who reference. I don't know. I caught it mm-hmm. as a Doctor Who. who this I is a Lord movie. of the Rings reference, one of my favourite yes. moments, because it really makes oh, you wonder right. what it would have been like if Toby Jones played. For a moment, Gollum? I thought I Gollum. thought Toby Jones was... was was Gollum? <laughs> yes. No, it's Andy Serkis. I was like, wait, wrong actor, wrong actor, wrong actor. Yeah, but wrong it really actor, makes you wonder, actor. was he ever up for that role? Maybe. I would have really liked to have seen, and they wouldn't have used CG. I was going to say that, yeah. Just, they would have just, just used Toby makeup. Jones. They would have put him in a nappy <laughs> and, and just said, off you go. <laughs> Oh, here we go. He's a favourite bit. And he would have been my favourite bit? Y- y- your non-favourite bit. Where they zoom in on England. And you're like, oh, I hate when they zoom in on England. That's like my <laughs> least favourite bits of movies. Can we get back to the real important issue? Toby Jones in the nappy trying to run around in the dirt with Elijah Wood. Being like, my precious. And his voice would just be his normal voice. Um, No. So we find out it's at the Globe Theatre where Shakespeare takes place. Ooh, is that... Shakespeare takes place at the Globe Theatre. Yeah, because they only do Shakespeare. At there. this point, at this point, because in a version I watched, there were no subtitles. So yeah. I, I thought, oh no, Kelly is, is going to be lesbian. working with David Tennant in some degree. I had that speculation, and I was like, oh no, this could turn quite bad. Yeah, I actually was me when I saw the scene. I was like, huh, they do laundry. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. I guess it's. Jumping back to that thing you sometimes bring up of the baby pigeon, you just don't think of certain people as doing certain things. I just don't think of Centrinian girls washing clothes. <laughs> or wearing reckon, them, to be honest. Do you reckon they use a washing machine or they do it by hand? I oh, reckon they do it with chemistry sets. <laughs> Here's your music video bit for you, Ryan. This is the 14th be... one in the movie. Yeah, so. I mean, we've already passed the one that oh, in the first film you described as a music video where it like had the whole transition-y and mm. cut things. We did that when they were boys. Now, mm. this movie has something that no other movie I've seen has... Yeah, no other movie I've seen has not, have I had, which is a flash mob distraction sequence. Yeah, that was such a 2009 of. thing. Flash it's a mob. 2017 thing still. Lauren, mm-hmm. if I did a... F- Look, I'm doing a flash mob now. Boo! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my this, god. Is, this is so unexpected. Why there's a, there's a flash people mob in the room? In the recording room. I can't believe a flash oh mob no. just happened while we were busy doing a show. This is, yeah. this is the most spontaneous thing I've seen all year. And what you didn't notice was I stole both your wallets while that happened. So. <laughs> Bartek's looking. He's like, "Where is it? Right here." That's right. Bartek, oh. grab a gun. Look, where's his wallet? Dish. <laughs> Oh my god, he got my wallet. I can't believe the dish. But where is it? Look, I'm going on. Hey, hey, it's not a joke. This is real. I know it's real. Calling this. We're a serious podcast. What? Um, 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 this bit, this bit. I was like, I was like, is David Tennant powerful enough to do that physically? (laughs) Yes. Anyone's powerful enough to choke someone physically, Lauren, unless they don't have hands, or if they have the power of love. Yeah. It would stop them from being too rough. Now, here's something I, I want to question you guys about. The costumes in this movie. Mm-mm. Very elegant. But the one that I want to bring up is David Tennant's. What do you think of his outfit? What? His suits? Yeah. They're not pinstripes. They aren't, Ryan. Well, that is true. boo-hoo. Get over Ryan, it. <laughs> Ryan, why don't you, you know, argue with that? Are they pinstriped? Well, technically they are. They've got stripes on them. They're more checkerboard. Ooh, Lauren, you gotta, you gotta. So Lauren, you just go get over it. No. What I was gonna insinuate was, um, his suit. What color is it? Gray. Oh, it matches his hair. Yeah. <laughs> and I was watching a movie recently. Uh, see the stripes on it, Lauren. What are you on about? It's just not as prominent. Uh, Lauren's just full of shit this episode. <laughs> now we're down to a three star rating. 
But that flash mob did bring it up a star, so we're back to four. <laughs> it was such a surprise, I couldn't believe it. I'm surprised it's that Lauren never asked for a wallet back. It's a shame we didn't record <laughs> What's it. What's in my wallet? Uh, condoms, cock ring, a picture of David Tennant, his address. Weird. <laughs> his address. His dress <laughs> that she's going to make him wear so that when she puts on the dildo, she's the man. That like that great movie. By Amanda Bynes, starring Amanda Bynes. No. Here's something I like. I watched a movie recently, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Mm-hmm. And Colin Farrell was in that movie and he had an excellent outfit that was black with like white lapels to his suit. And his hair was very similar to that of Winter's Tail. Where it had like the undercut and the floppy slicked back hair. But what made his hair work more than that was the sides had, they were white, like his hair was white. And I actually sat down to myself and went, oh, well, Colin Farrell's hair must just be getting white. But then now I realized watching this movie, was it? Costume and hair wanted to match together. So his hair, top black, the sides like lapels, white. Pretty smart, Centrinians too, inspiring Colin Farrell to have a really elegant outfit and hairstyle in a later movie. In a Harry Potter affiliated film. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Shit dog wind his tail is a Harry Potter movie too. Didn't think of that. Well it's set really far in the past. Yep. It's set in the same era <laughs> as Fantastic Beasts. If you look really closely in every Harry Potter film, you see the black guy flipping a coin. I just saw that woman there, the 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 receptionist dancing and I asked myself last night because she's still doing it after it's all done I'm like is she is she okay I hope she's okay I she's, like I don't know what's up with her I, feel I like think she's, she's in bit... another plane like we said earlier I think she's in another film I agree so is Toby Jones to be honest I don't to know what fair, movie he's in that is a good way of thinking about it like if there's some kind of alternate universes where every universe is a different film mm. that'd be an interesting concept like oh she's currently in uh, A Winter's Tale She's so enlightened that she can go to other films. Yeah. And the nerd has treasure tracker technology? Right, she's a geek. Get it right. Ah, I'm sorry. And they're not chavs. They're, what was it? Rude girls. Rude girls. Is it that they're not chavs or is it that they don't want to be called chavs? They don't want to be called chavs. Yeah, so... They are chavs. They just don't want to be called it. They're they're the type of girls who go... Catch me outside. How about that? It's like when I call you boat tech. You're like, no, it's it's bar ship. (laughs) I just, I just felt really offended, Ryan, but I'm glad you... Dush, d- dush. Look, I distracted him with a flash mob again. <laughs> Good job, Ryan. It took me a second to be like, oh, I was doing a flash mob again, yeah. <laughs> okay, what did we think about Romeo and Juliet here? I really wish they were played by famous actors, so that way I could really buy <laughs> Leonardo into Leonardo DiCaprio and... I actually <laughs> really would have liked it if the guy who played Romeo was... Uh, uh, the, uh, if they had the same people who did Romeo and Juliet from uh, Hot Fuzz, but then I realised Lucy Punch already exists in this universe <laughs> in the first film as Colin Firth's daughter, well, who, might I add, never helped her dad with his severe alcoholism. Mm. What a bitch! I guess the only actors we can get then are the Romeo and Juliet actors. Are these Romeo and Juliet actors? No. Are you sure? But I'm saying if we could get them, that would be a nice little reference to a trauma film. It would be great. And then they sword fight Colin Firth. Now, here's something I love. Colin Firth uses a watering can. And they're like, what's he going to do with that? It's like, oh, he's really good with it, though. I feel like Colin Firth decided that day, I'm going to use this. Get rid of the sword. They were going to just have a plain sword fight sequence. And Colin Firth's like, no, I want to throw stuff at this guy because I'm a better Romeo. And the director was like, he's going to win an Oscar one day. No, he... <laughs> I'll make he's sure He's seen that... proves it. Here's something I want you to think about, guys. Okay, I'll think for you. They do Romeo and Juliet. Mm-hmm. Mm. How good of a connection is that to the first movie? Mm. To the drama, te- drama society? Yeah. They used to both do the drama society. And I really like the fact that he doesn't know any Shakespeare, really, and she knows it word for word. <laughs> and then Toby Jones knows it better than both of them combined. Like, he really yeah. knows it. No, he Red knows the Robins. other Shakespearean monologues extremely well. And I like the fact that the idea of this maths teacher knows Shakespeare and acting better than the two society people who have done drama. Like, we don't know what Toby Jones' character's background is, but I imagine it's good. Yeah. Also... 
where's Cersei in this movie? The English yeah. teacher that became corrupted in the first. There are just a lot of people who didn't come back. But, you but know, we got Roxy, so it's okay. <laughs> she, she's like the poochie of this universe. You know what I mean? <laughs> she goes home at the end. Recycle to the extreme! <laughs> so there's a lot of reviews. No, at the end of this, we're going to read the reviews and all that from IMDb. Just spoil it. The first movie had 13 pages of reviews. This movie had three. Wow. <laughs> it really shows Is this you... the lowest of every film we've done? I think it's one of the lowest. I think one of them had four. I'm pretty oh, sure. Okay. This is pretty low. And look, here he is in a big baggy shirt. Lauren, did it remind you of Centrinian's one? Yes, the white shirt scene and also the one in Pride and Prejudice. Mean, no, just Centrinian's one, one. You mean the one that they flash back to in this film? Yeah. <laughs> like we're just overlaying it over a His painting. first appearance. Nay, it's a comedy. Good job, Rupert. You're nailing this. So, this film was made by the people who did the first film. I think that's really great. I love it when that happens with sequels where, you know, they come back, the same team, to create the second one and the feeling's still there. Even though the, this movie, like we said, is completely different genre, different style. Like, David Tennant is... Like, the first one didn't have a villain, really. Like, it did, but this one has a villain. Mm-hmm. Like, straight out, the I'm a villain. The first one had a major conflict, we can say that. A conflict yeah. that they had to overcome. Oh, it had like three conflicts. You're right. Yeah. This one just has one, which is treasure. Well, I mean, the conflict is that they need to get the treasure first, and there is an antagonist also trying to get the treasure. In it, the first one, there wasn't someone who's like, oh, we want to bankrupt them. They just had their own things that would lead no. to them being bankrupt. Yeah, it's their own fault. Now, here's something I love. This film has a speech in it that was so good do you remember the speech who gave the speech Ryan was uh, it was it David Tennant Who's, who gave the speech no 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 I've got it in my notes there was a character in this movie I think it was Rupert Everett that gives like this legendarily long speech about like feminism and powerhood and it was just like this is up there with the meatball speech from Big Fat Liar. <laughs> like, I think it was earlier in the movie after... I remember the turbine speech. Mm. That was pretty good. Yeah. About, <laughs> from Juno Temple. <sighs> I can't remember. There's a speech in this movie I wish that I... I, I was, was, it, was it the one where they brought up the Queen and... and... Monica Lewinsky and all that. That was Lady Gaga. I think maybe because that was, that was Camilla. That, yeah, that was yeah, that was Fritton. Uh, I think maybe that was it. There's so many great speeches in this movie that you just can't nail them all down. David Tennant gives a really good speech in a little bit. It's probably one of my favorite moments of the entire movie. Was it after that plot twist that we even alluded the to? The plot twist that we're gonna allude to. <laughs> That we did allude to. We, we will allude to it. We have alluded to it, we're going to reveal it. <laughs> no, we'll allude to it a bit more. Well, There's a plot twist it? in this movie. Yeah, and surprisingly it hasn't And it involves yet. the theatre, don't want to say. No. Uh, <laughs> it, it's going to be like this scene, basically. No, no, it's a scene or two later. Yeah, but... Yeah, it's in the well, sequence. While, while things are happening still on stage, dish, it'll happen. Dish, dish. Oh, I distracted him again. Good job, Ryan. What film are we doing again? Uh, I think we're doing... Uh, Scooby-Doo uh, 2? No, we're talking about Scooby-Doo 2, though. This film's exactly like Scooby-Doo 2, where it captures the spirit more. It goes in more of a cartoony direction with the sequel, but I feel like it's more of a true story, true telling of this franchise. We have to wait, guys. It's about to happen. It's about to happen. I've been waiting two movies for this. What? That Colin Firth would kiss... You know they have sex in the last one, right? <laughs> yeah, you know that they have full hardcore penetration in the last movie. Like, they mentioned that. Yes, but we didn't see that, did we? Oh, we didn't see the rape. You're right. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> yeah. But you know, Silly him getting drugged. But you know what we do see in this movie? A slapper with a brain of gold. Not a heart, a brain. She figures out through just sheer... Here's what I love. Are the nerds actually help- geeks actually helpful? Because everything that they yeah, we didn't, dismiss, yeah. we didn't talk about like the- genius stuff that Ew. not a genius would need to figure out. Like, like the uh, riddle, the riddle, and all this stuff. We didn't even like, talk about that. <laughs> like everything that the dumb people figure out, it's pretty easy. But the nerds are like, we've fact checked it. Alley, sorry, like, Remember did you guys? Away, remind me of that. 
Did you guys, when they said the riddle, do you think it was like mast or master? Because I heard master. I knew it was mast because I had subtitles, but I, I thought it was like, oh, master. And okay, to I be honest, yeah. when they said ring upon the ear, I was like, oh, it's an actual ring on the an ear ring. And then yeah. it was. Yeah. So I was like, <laughs> fuck, you should have got me to figure it out. <laughs> Wouldn't it have been great if one character did just walk in and they already had the ring? It's like, guys, it was dead simple. I figured it out. I went to the boys' school. It was there. <laughs> I also thought with this kind of thing with treasure movies, there's always that problem of what happens if they rocked up at the boys' school and everything was gone because it's been <laughs> like, like yeah. 420 years. It's like, no, oh, dude, this is this is a museum now. And then it like cuts to like uh, an old man wearing a ring, and he's like. Aww. Telling oh, the story to his grandkids oh, about this yeah. adventure that he had where he found a ring. <laughs> and it cuts to this completely different movie. Wait, here we go. Colin Firth and Everett Kiss. You know that's like the actually Everett there? Yeah. It's, it's not. Favorite. It's not. It's mm-hmm. Standin. Colin Firth's just kissing a standin of Everett. Are you sure? It? Yeah. Pretty sure. I'm just breaking your heart more, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> you know in films... You're slowly tearing me apart. You know apart. in films they have stand-ins, yeah? Ryan, you're tearing me apart. Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> so, here we are discovering more and more that, oh, here's the original theatre. Everything's intact, though. Nothing's gone bad. I actually thought this was a dog humping him. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I thought it was, it was more like <laughs> masturbating, right? Why dog humping? <laughs> Maybe the dog was masturbating him, jerking him off. Why was his hand moving? No, like, the dog was... Was he patting the dog's head while it was... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Giving him a blowy. I love this. It's no, not yet. But he has an outfit that matches his suit. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't you love that? I love how in drama we learnt, like, oh, you know, don't just say, yeah, that's it when you end a play. Like, actually just just stop and bow. But then he comes on and's like, no, it's not over yet. Like, we're going to keep going. And this is a serious Shakespeare production with other actors yes. involved. Where are these other actors at? Who knows? The ones that were... Oh, right, because, well, this is a scene that only has Romeo and Juliet, right? Yeah, I know, but, like, you it's know... It's not their scene yet, right? Yeah, so but, like, they come on? they've done, like, three hours of a show by now, because, you know, it's Shakespeare. They, well. they don't want to ruin stage magic, Ryan. Something's happening that they don't understand. They I do love it. how David Tennant just gets the shits and just goes, oh, fuck it, and just basically walks up, goes through the he's, passageway. He's too polite British. He needs to Wait? Wait? Uh, and here's some more references. Rapid bleeping. This the... is the scene where we learn the twist. Yeah, the twist being that the nerd didn't need the beeping all along. A treasure chest was right there in front of her <laughs> glasses. Does she need the glasses? <laughs> I think she needs fucking new ones. I have a real problem with the nerds, to be honest. Geeks, Ryan. Fuck. Oop, oot. I love also that Toby <laughs> Jones is doing different accents for the different <laughs> ones as well. Or was he doing Macbeth there? Yeah, yeah, he was doing Macbeth. He was like, oot, dumb spot. And it's like, oh, good one, Toby. And now he's doing like a literal interpretation of Caesar. So I'm very proud of Toby Jones in this movie. I felt like this was an improvement. We got more of certain characters we didn't mm. in the first movie. Like Tallulah Riley. <laughs> like Tallulah Riley or Toby Jones or Fritton. Not much Colin Firth, though, as much as that. But he got a sword fight, so what am I complaining about, to be honest? He got quite a few good scenes. Like, he's also in less scenes, but all the scenes are actually pretty good. So, Bartek, did you have a favourite character in this? Um, mm, that's a good question. Uh, I think I really did kind of like what little Colin Firth was doing. Aww. What about you, Lauren? I, I like the head chav. The I don't head know why. chav. I was just drawn to it. I like her too because she beatboxed her way to freedom. Yeah. That was a great scene. I'll admit that. Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's really hard to do this show sometimes because you just watch movies that are so good that it infuriates you as to why they're not loved. And this is one of those movies. There's a scene in this movie where someone beatboxed their way to freedom and it's not loved as a comedy <laughs> classic, but something like... Maybe not freedom, but as a distraction. That makes you think, why does Metal Gear Solid ever have anything like yeah, that? Yeah, exactly. Like, instead of using a box, you should literally beat a box. Well, like, you sh- you're sneaking around the big shell and all of a sudden you come across a choir and it's like, hey... Wait a moment. Pirate Fritton was Shakespeare. <gasps> oh! Oh, my God. Even and what, what was it that you were saying about the teeth earlier, Ryan? The teeth? show that it's a fritten and a woman 
and he a woman was fritten. and he was a woman and a fritten all along. And the audience just cheered. Get it? In and the, the final the film. Audience. And what's the final play? Queen, Queen Lear, Lear, a feminist piece. So does that mean that King Lear was not Shakespeare? No, that was clearly a Pomfrey trying to impersonate a Shakespeare. Oh, it was Pomfrey's uh, ancestor. Yeah. Oscar Wilde. Ugh. <gasps> that all the while I was. What? A girl. A girl. A girl. A girl. Oh, a this is Shakespeare in motion here. Wicked. I love it. <laughs> Wicked. She really is LEG. Uh oh, she- look, it's still there, the prosthetics. <laughs> the bard is, is a, a bird. bird. Shakespeare wouldn't have said it as good. I love it. A woman wrote the Bible. This is a great <laughs> part. Because, because she proved that she's smarter than your average dum dum, but then she proves that she's dumber well, than your average dum dum. The girl dum-dum. with the earring was clearly Scarlett Johansson. Mm. <laughs> oh, and wait, here we go. One of the great parts here where. Ciao, ciao. <laughs> David Tennant brings surrealist amount of realism into a comedy where he really defeats them by just sheer, like, reality of the situation mm, yeah. of, go on, do it. Who's going to believe you? You're schoolgirls and I'm a powerful man. Who cares? <laughs> and I really thought this is where the movie <laughs> faltered for me. Mm. I actually said, wouldn't it be great if he, if the movie ended with him winning and it's like a to be continued and then you have it. The girls of Centrinians have to and it becomes more of like a... a trilogy. A, no, an espionage movie, the third one, where they have to dismantle the uh, organisation that he's in charge of. Dismantle and, the patriarchy. <laughs> yeah, and it's called Battle of the Sexes. That is the name, yeah. And and wouldn't it be great if he was the essential antagonist again, and it's like this battle between these two genders and all that kind of stuff, and he wins this round, so they win the next, you know what I mean? Like, he's won mm. the battle, but not the war. Yeah, and I love this. It's like, please don't tell on me. Please don't tell on me. Oh, <laughs> so tenant. And look, that look, <laughs> like, uh, he's done. Uh, and you know, I, I love. Tennis, uh, I play tennis with Sting for Christ's sake. And he says it more Britishly than that too. It's like I play tennis f- with Sting for Christ's sake. <laughs> Even though he's got a thick Scottish accent in real life. Mm. Really, uh, you will. Well, you'd know that if you watched Doctor Who. Yeah. I'm d- I'm big human, all right. Ha ha! He doesn't have an accent of Scottish variety, Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. Yes, he does. No, no, he doesn't. He, he puts does. British Look, accent. he wears the oh, also. What's that thing that what's his face wore in the Avengers that I didn't know suit, about? Suit. This is the kilt thing. He wears a sparring. Sparring, yeah. He never he, wears a sparring in Doctor. He does. Didn't you see the episode where he went to the library and said a witty thing, and then all the people on Facebook were like, "Oh, that was so great." So, here's foreshadowing. Met. A pirate ship was set up in the third act. Mm -hmm. A pirate ship will be used in that same act. Pirate ships. Mm -hmm. My girlfriend sat next to me and went, you know what's going to happen to how they defeat him? And I'm like, oh, how? They're going to become pirates. And I actually said, no. (laughs) (laughs) Right, you idiot. No, and then the wind. I think I have an idea. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she gives this speech about, like, yeah, like, the wind did beat them. Like, (gasps) calling back to the turbines. Turbines. And look at him. He's so cocky. And he's the thing I don't understand. Why did he just throw it into the ocean? I mean, into the river. (laughs) Exactly. Just throw it into the river. Once they try to blow you up, we'll be too late. You know what I mean? Like, am I insane about this? Or. Oh, explain this. What throw what in the river? The manuscript, the the evidence. I really like. Oh right, Peters. yeah. Why doesn't he destroy? Peters it? is such a good character. Is he though? <laughs> He's no David Tennant. Uh, why burn it? You go water right there. Yeah, soak it up and then try to grab it and then it'll break. Was Shakespeare really four hundred twenty years? That face was he really four hundred twenty years ago? It was in the fifteen hundreds. Mm. I'm pretty sure. It was Man. Black at a two time. Oh well, there you go. Now, this because is... you know who played Shakespeare in that Blackadder goes back and forth series, right? Rupert Everett. No, <laughs> Colin Firth. Oh yeah, he played Shakespeare in the Blackadder film. Well, yeah, yeah, I knew that, but I was just making a joke because Rupert Everett's everyone. <laughs> it was a very <laughs> funny joke, right? And this was even better when they used piracy to defeat the bad guy. When in doubt, murder them. 
Which I learned from the Green Hornet as well. Murder your enemy if you can't win. Outsmart them. <laughs> just a, stab them in the And then stab David Tennant's just standing there with the book going, why is this happening? Here's my thing. Why did he hand why? it over? Throw it over. Like, oh, she really is a freak. No! That look where it's like, my paycheck, <laughs> come back. And no, no, you know, <gasps> you know what they should have done? What? They should have all got on jet skis. Hold on, hold on. They should have all got on. They should have all got on jet skis, and formed like a massive amount of like, line, like rows, like they did similar, in the Centurion School. Oh, destruction of property, Centurion School, and they all should have stood there. They should also have stood up on their jet skis and sung the Centurion's theme and did some flash mob dancing, (laughs) and then threaten. Can walk and on this over is the end of and the take movie, the it? script from the bad guy, and he'll be like, "Oh, this flash mob's so good," and that's how he gets defeated. <laughs> now this is the end of the movie. Is it though? Are you sure? I don't see girls allowed singing. <laughs> oh well, wait! I mean, one of them's somewhere, right? And that's something really interesting. Why don't girls allowed sing in this when they have the singer in the movie? Mm. Now, oh, oh, I want to say the flammables. Yeah. You really thought they were going to do something, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, those girls allowed. Yeah. You thought they'd, like, light some polyester. Get this. I actually thought, at the end, they would actually light one of them on fire and throw them at the bad guys. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't happen, though. Yeah. I was really disappointed by that. So the movie came to an end, but David Tennant's not done yet. No. He really needs to get that paycheck. <laughs> and uh, good and job, Rupert. Rupert Everett pole dancing. Rupert wasn't acting here. This was just him. <laughs> Colin Firth, you could say he was acting. He wasn't. And uh, here's a great moment where you just have to love the fact that he he brushes it off. I have to ask myself, I love the how fact do they, they prove still call his... it secret society, even though it was being revealed. <laughs> but I love this. I haven't been exposed as a sexist. Ha, huh, I'm not in focus, by the way. Like, <laughs> <laughs> And I love this, how he just has nothing to say. He's like, huh, humiliated. He's a bit strong. He's still charming as fuck. <laughs> and here's the thing that I love about it is how did they expose the secret society at the end? Yes. Well, he was wet. <laughs> no, he got sunk by a pirate ship. That must have been it was a secret society. You must have done something pretty bad to get sunk by a pirate ship. And I love that this... Oh, thanks, Juno. Licking that finger. <laughs> Not enough boobs in this one. Just like the last one. Again, a weakness. But I really think that this movie's weakness is the ending. But I don't think that's worthy of it being forgotten. You mean the dance party ending or the actual just ending? Ending, ending. Yeah. Dance party ending's fine. It would have been great if they lost and they danced sadly. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) See, I was really like, wait, that's not Paloma Faith? Oh, far out. I was actually really shocked. (laughs) Thanks, Ella. You did a good job. Mm. So, Bartek... Uh, and Lauren, what do you think made this unappreciated? I mean, you guys liked it less than the first one as well. You know, mm-hmm. kind of share some thoughts on that. Uh, is this our reviews? No, just a general. I mean, you if you want to make it your review of why it failed. I think maybe. Remember how in the f- when we did the first episode uh, a couple of days back, Ryan, we uh, talked about how even though the film was sort of meant to be targeted at younger women we felt that it might appeal more to older women yeah maybe this one had something weird going on there where it didn't quite it didn't balance it out it didn't quite feel like it was as targeted to the older women audience mm. which I, which funnily enough is the same thing with the Scooby Doo movie that we did last year yeah Lauren you agree with that something? I agree with that wow well, I guess we'll get into our reviews and a uh, rating. I'll, I'll get straight on into it, you know? I'll go straight off. I think this movie's great. I liked it more than the first. I felt that the humour was stronger. And I felt like the characters were more defined in this one. I liked the battle of the different cliques in this. I liked the idea that they, hey, they don't all get along. In the first one, that was a problem for me. They seemed to get on too well. Uh, you know, and I felt like that was not true to the vibe of the thing, you know? I felt like this movie, the second one, nailed it. I love the fact that it was real enough to say, hey, let's go in a completely different area with Centrinians. Let's go 
to an adventure story with a secret cult of women hating men, which is so Centrinians, you know, like <laughs> women hating men kind of makes it sound like there are women who hate men. <laughs> there are women hating men, <laughs> and there are men hating women. And the fact of the matter is, this movie deals with something that a lot of movies don't deal with, and that is sexism. It's a tough subject to deal with in a and comedy. And also climate change. Oh, that too. But it's a tough thing to deal with in a in a modern day comedy movie directed towards chavs. But this movie did it. If this movie has one thing that a lot of the unappreciated masterpieces need more of, it's heart. A lot of them do, but this one wears its heart on its sleeve and it says, I ain't apologizing for nothing, governor. And starts beatboxing in your face. This film shows no mercy. And maybe that's why it's unappreciated. Because it does not hold anything back. It says, no, I'm going to be real with you. I am going to show you the truth, gov. And it's going to hurt, bruv. That's right, this film is Brill out of, out of Ient. But, and you're rating, Ryan? No, that's, <laughs> that's my rating. <laughs> if uh, I had to give one, that is. <laughs> Which you don't have to, but you could, and that would be it. So, me next? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, right. Well, Lauren didn't want to say too much this podcast. <laughs> be fair, she said quite a bit. <laughs> I'm becoming immune to it, Ryan. <laughs> you, can... you need new tunes. Okay. Goosh. Goosh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what movie are we doing? Uh, we're doing Centurion's 3, The Search for Curly's Battle of Sex. <laughs> I'd watch that. Look, okay, so the movie... I know you would. Centurion's 2, The Search for Fritten's Gold. This film, I, I I do maintain that I think the first film was a better film, but I don't think that that should matter even in the slightest. Mm. I feel like there are plenty of films that have gotten sequels, not even necessarily duologies like this, but even trilogies, which all offer something different, which is something that, ex uh, not establishes, it expands on the world. It's kind of like how you have, you know, the whole... Star Trek, Star Wars, even maybe Doctor Who, you have got all these expanded stories that like delve from the main mm. and it lets you see different perspectives. Like, if we were to look at say, Back to the Future, the first film is the one that everyone considers to be the best, but... <laughs> Clearly they didn't watch number three then. But, well, to get into that, you could say, yeah, oh well, yeah, the first film's the best, but you could also uh, tell them, does the first film have a representation of an alternate 1985? Does it have a representation of the future? Does it have a representation of the 1800s? And you would say, no, no it certainly does not. And that's something that the sequels have that the original film does not. Sequels, by their nature, give you something else. They don't necessarily have to beat the previous one. They don't necessarily have to improve on the previous one. There are certainly elements of this film that I think were much better than the first one. Mm. But that doesn't mean that the whole thing needs to be a completely brand new experience of new actors or anything like that. Which certainly this film did have that. We could argue that Roxy maybe did not do much, the emos didn't do as much. But... I think that with it changing up its priorities, maybe omitting some actors, adding some new ones, it gave us a brand new story that would not fit with the first film. In the first film, we were learning about how the school runs. We had certain characters such as the twins play major mm. roles. And in this film, you know, they were still there, but they had downplayed roles. It was a new story focusing on a new genre, giving us a new experience. And if I were to walk up to someone and that someone were to say, hey, stop right there, I know you're walking up to me, but I have something to say to you. Which St. Trinian's film do you recommend I watch? And I would tell them, well, you'd have to watch both. How are you gonna get the full context of this universe that they made two movies to create and realize if you're only gonna watch one of them? Yeah. So I believe that you should definitely watch both films. Do not discredit one just because you think one might be sub inferior. Mm. And the rating I give this film 
is the flash mob of my heart. <laughs> That's his heartbeat. <laughs> yes, I'm Call an ambulance. <laughs> Lauren. I'm going to the hospital okay. soon. All right. Having gone to a girls' school. Yeah, but nothing much happened there, according to you. No, no, no. This is a heightened reality version of a girls' school. It kind of makes it... If you were 11 and you saw this and you go, Jesus Christ, that's what goes on in a girls' school. Okay, sweet. I'll be partying the entire time. You're wrong. Um, you're very wrong. That doesn't happen but at this all. this is England. You get so I've got skirt, a comment you get, about you, that. You get your skirts measured at your knees. Well, this is a different... Girl school, though. Yes, yes, but this is most. They do laundry. Most Australian girls' schools. Um. Anyway, getting back on track. Um, this film, out of the two, deals with the myths and mythologies of Shakespeare. Yeah. Now I'm a bit partial to Shakespeare myths. I love researching them. Um, and it just adds another layer to did, the did question myth... of: Is Shakespeare a woman? A woman, but did he actually write the plays, or uh, was it another person? Was he a pirate king at was some he, point? Was he, he another? King? Was he a lord? Was he a a pirate? Was he Jack the Ripper? We'll never know. Exactly. He's just some guy. So it just adds another question to reality that we need to answer: Was Shakespeare actually, actually, actually a woman in hiding? And then it kind of links back into how Shakespeare hired women. The heart, no, had men playing women as well. Yeah. And then you think, wow, I- it's actually a really smart film because Sh- Rupert Everett plays a woman, oh. which links back to Shakespeare. And then you're like, shit, fuck this. This is what? brilliant. This is gold. This is Fritten's gold. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say that, and I was so happy you went there. That's great. So, my rating is if you love mythology movies or. Movies about legends, which Ryan calls me apparently a legend, a myth. Are you nah. recommending Gear One? <laughs> yeah, what's your rating here, Lauren? My rating is David Tennant not throwing the damn book over the water out into of, the water. Out of itself? <laughs> out of David Tennant only being humiliated. <laughs> Ah, oh, that's pretty good. But this is even better. Bartek and I have reviews and comments. I have reviews from IMDb. He has comments from YouTube. That's true. This is for Centurions <laughs> 2, Fritten, Legend of Fritten's Gold. I have a 10-star review written in 2010. It's called Great Fun. I saw this with my mum and my younger sister. Amazingly, we were the only people in the cinema. I'd have thought more people would have wanted to see it. In comparison to the first one, I would say that this one is more child-friendly, hence the PG certificate. There is less dark and sexually oriented humour. However, I didn't find it as funny, personally. However, I loved it! The script is funny and the plot is ridiculous and strangely unpredictable. It is also... It also has one dance routine at a train station, which I thought was ingenious. I know, that's sad. <laughs> one slight problem, though. Not enough Gemma Arterton. Never mind. Hopefully there'll be another yes, sequel with, with lots that. more of her in it. Ten stars. And I'll read another one, which is eight stars. And it's titled, Absolutely Loved It. And by the way, most of these are reviews are from the UK. Not as many from Canada or the South Africa this time. Okay. Eight stars. Absolutely loved it. This is an absolute Christmas cracker. I think it is slicker and more polished. Get it? Polished. <laughs> than the first film. And Rupert Everett is even better this time around as Miss Fritton. It is camp, witty, and outrageous, and full of classic one-liners. The new girls are hilarious, and Tasman Edgerton, who played Chelsea, has proved that her future career lies in comedy. Yes, it doesn't. It lies in romantic comedy. Excuse me. Yes, it's movie slash panto for the masses, but that's half of its charm. At a time when England is in the grip of mass unemployment and recession, this is the kind of family comedy that everyone can enjoy. I cannot believe all of the bad reviews. 
That said, the vast majority of them are written by men aged 35 to 60. Go figure! At least the filmmakers know their target audience, unlike the people whose job it is to criticise. I'm sure it will be as, as successful as the first film. Top marks, class. No detention for anyone. <laughs> that's, okay. that's the two reviews I got for the moment. It's like that review thinks it's set in a school or something. <laughs> it is a school. It's an institution. The first comment that I found kind of goes contrary to something Lauren just said in her <sighs> review, which is, this movie and the first one made me want to go to boarding school. <laughs> oh yeah which in in depending on the context that could sound like a plea for help like at help home me. at home her parents are beating her okay <laughs> so keep but going. not in this case so it's okay audience the next comment is actually the longest one that i have for today yum no response comments this time <clears throat> and it might be written by lauren who knows because it starts with David Tennant, one of me favourite doctors from Doctor Who. Love David Tennant. He reminds me so much of Richard Hammond from Top Gear. Looks quite a bit like him. Also from the other comments, if yeah. read lovely to see him not the only one with some love for David Tennant. Smiley face. <laughs> also glad to see me girl Sarah back and not just seeing the St. Trinian's theme as before, but actually having a role in the film so we get to see so, so much more of her than we did in the first film when we only saw her in the end performing the theme song with the rest of the girls allowed. Hashtag girls allowed forever. <laughs> Fuck me. Oh, man, so I miss full stops. Ah, <laughs> uh, man, I had that last week too. Next comment. <clears throat> This movie is not even half of what the original series was. Not funny, music terrible, girls did not behave like the original. That right there just shows that they're not going to be happy. Etc. Person asking if David Tennant is in it should learn to read because it is in the introductory titles. <laughs> And then the next one is much more intelligent. Go UK and Phil's. These films are epically lol. I can't wait for three next year. <laughs> Did three actually happen? No. This, so she's still most waiting. Of, most of these comments from she's 2013. Still uh, read us one more. And uh, <clears throat> I'll read you. Alright, this, one, this one's a question. Oh, good. With no question marks, to be fair. Anyone know a nice film for girl? That movie, it's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. But I have a more negative review, unfortunately. It is one, two, three, four, five stars. Some big names in the cast. What were they at? Is the title. <laughs> what were they at? Mm-hmm. With leading British actors such as Colin Firth, David Tennant, and Toby Jones, you'd expect no Rupert Everett. I mean, no Rupert Everett in that list. <laughs> <you> <laughs> one of Such. Leading actors as Colin Firth, David Tennant, and Toby Jones, you'd expect a movie to be quite good, even if it does have Centrinians in the title. However, this isn't the case. I didn't see the first modern remake. Perhaps it was a lot better, but this movie is quite disappointing. I wasn't expecting Shakespeare, though I did get some. But I, but basically, it's not very funny. Though there are a couple of good lines, the slapstick scenes aren't great though. None of the characters are really appealing. The plot is very far-fetched and there is a very annoying soundtrack. Okay, I'm getting old and grumpy. I admit it. <laughs> like, they just have to admit that. <laughs> Perhaps I shouldn't be reviewing this movie at all. It... It probably isn't. It is probably aimed at teenage girls who would love the idea of running wild in a boarding school while hanging around with Colin Firth and David Tennant. Tennant. However, <laughs> the movie certainly didn't appeal to me. And then I have another negative review. One star. <gasps> Contemplated suicide oh, is the title. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, Roy's not going to be happy. Was possibly the worst film I have ever seen. However, slightly less painful watching this film than sitting on a cactus. Emphasis on the word slightly. 
The storyline was atrocious, and yet the acting was even worse from start to end. The fact that I had to pay for it made me feel like I had been robbed and violated. I was genuinely considering asking for a refund. I honestly cannot think of any films which either irritated my gag reflex or made me want to gouge up my eyes with a rust spoon covered in chilli sauce. Like this one. Yeah. The only reason why I didn't walk out of the complex or fall asleep in the cinema in the cinema was because my girlfriend would not let me. I would not recommend anyone to watch this film and certainly not pay to view it. However, on the upside, the film is crammed full of beautiful young ladies. Even I love crammed full of beautiful young ladies. Even this was unsuccessful in keeping my attentions on the film due to the fact mentioned earlier, the acting was of an incredibly low standard. No, I thought I was going to mention his girlfriend. And uh, I've got one review, and it's a long one, so you hit us with right. some. Um, just to cover my ass a bit, for more information on Roy, see our Zoom episode. <laughs> <clears throat> this next one is from a person who uh, likes the movie and wants to defend it from criticism. Good for them. <laughs> This is a finny movie, and it obviously isn't your taste, but it is ours, so keep off our movie. <laughs> Don't well, laugh, they were being, you know, sincere. I agree. Even though they couldn't spell this or funny, but... Hey, leave the illiterate alone. Well, speaking of... Well, not... I was going to make an illiterate joke, but that's kind of bad. It was going to be racist, because I was going to talk yeah, about the don't, Welsh. Don't say anything bad about the illiterate. Write it. Yes. So... <laughs> that's a good one. This next comment is a, it's a, bad, it's a personal-ish kind of one. Yes! <laughs> but the Welsh, like me, dot, 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 oind ye gimraig fell fee, dot, 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 yes, I go to a Welsh school, and I'm proud, if only it were St. Trins. <laughs> good for them. I'm very proud of them. Now, this is a person who just has a, a gut lot, reaction. A lot of feelings. This is a gut reaction. Good. The fuck he mean, the weaker sex? Fuck him. <laughs> Fuck who? David Tennant, obviously. <laughs> God. I would. The next comment, Colin Firth is the only relevance in this film, TBH. Oh, wow. That's really hard to say that against such comedic talents as... He's the only Tasman relevance. Tasman Edgerton. <laughs> Another comment we have here is... <clears throat> I would make every young girl watch this. And then she writes a quote... A woman can't do a man's job. Says who? It's a very... It's an emotional it's an empowering, line of dialogue. It's an empowering yeah. comment. Yeah, empowering. Just like this next one. Yes. I would not let a young girl watch this. Quote, I didn't know we had a library. Hehehe. <laughs> WTF. The hehehe <laughs> was not part of the quote, so she actually found it funny, then she said WTF. Wow. Give us one more, and I'll give you the final review from right. IMDb. This, one, this one's a callback to some comments from last week. Good. Seriously, can someone please assassinate this narrator? He ruins trailers regardless of how well they made or how good the film is. I watched the trailer this time. It's that... Have you ever watched the Honest trailers? Yeah. yeah. It's the voice that that's an exaggeration of. Uh, the, the, the typical, like... Coming out this summer. This summer, you can go to here. That kind of voice. So, yeah. Oh, I, I remember another comment really hated how he pronounced Gemma Arterton. Gemma Arterton. It was like, and I wanted it was like Gemma Arterton. <laughs> Is that it? Uh, that's it for now. I've got a few oh, more. Oh, Bartek, you'll be very, very happy. I've got four more comments. This is a review from a previous reviewer on our last film of Centurions. Can you take a guess from who it is from the title? An Ealing tribute to Princess Selina and Dakota Cassie? Version 1.06. <laughs> There was something like that last it week. It was the it? first review we did last week where they wrote a thesis. Again, we have one. It is ten <laughs> All stars. All the one that Grace hated. <laughs> a story of stature. First viewing... <laughs> Fuck. Get ready, Lauren. First All right. viewing... First viewing, it just felt weak and empty, apart from a few rather humorous bits. The 2007 Trinians felt a lot like that too. Just... There was enough okay there for me to know that I would have a second viewing, and now I rate it as one of the better teen 20s type stories. Why on earth would I want to view the 2009 part 2 for a second time? 
second viewing happened and it was starting to click, I now rate the sequel high as well. I'm guessing that it is unlikely that there will be further stories in this particular set of Trinian features, and I find that a pity, as these are quality. For me, the 2007 Trinians had structural elements, the range of anarchy, the need to question old time values, a need to be able to stand on one's own feet for one considers to be worthwhile. So those structural elements are used as ingredients for a comedy. For me, the 2009 Trinians carries on in the same sort of way, while facing rather different old time values. The director's interviews in the background notes add to that. I find the background notes to be silly girlish twaddle, but if one looks at the style of how the directors present themselves rather than their words, then I find that it, this is saying something. These stories do not try to be good examples, but I still find them to be entertainment. The likelihood of any important historic figure, such as Shakespeare, for example, having been a female to male, is remote. I know that such happened, but the better known figures are known and ascribed as women needing to do things prescribed to women rather than being properly female to male? That's a question, Bartek. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Look, I'm just I here to say that the first one was Death Note, that's my only joke. I mentioned that, that as I am a male to female, if I press ganged male to female... What? I mentioned that as I am a male to female, if I press ganged male to female, that's the end of that sentence. So he's a, he's a trans woman. I note the skirt of band Eco Venus. She's a trans woman. Daisy, excuse me. I note the skirt of band Eco Venus Daisy. I figures such <laughs> I figures such as Shakespeare or Da Vinci, for example, might have been secret girls or cuddlers of secret girls. Cuddlers. I mean possibly even Da Vinci was theoretically gay, but possibly even press ganged to be secret girls and that is a related issue and then this just has a random asterisk like there's just oh, a the, random asterisk but it's not leading there's no to no note no this is just a random asterisk last week he had a note further stories Jeez. such as this tend to include quotes or pointers re other stories and i noticed some the main one being that gate that gate that the girls go through at the end, echoes of the gate that Dakota Fanning dreamed about in Push 2009. Dakota's Cassie, as with Arthur's Princess Selina, strong figures who both stood out in their respective stories. We are the best, so screw the rest. The song lyrics are occasionally too vomit worthy. Underclass should know that this feature hints at real disease in society. Disease that often messes us up. <laughs> right, this is real. Um, yet the feature itself is rather calm and could be it is the early reference to Heathers that hints at how and why. I rate these two features to be as relevant as Heathers but more tolerable for those who might disagree with what they say. Banned. Like, that's just one sentence. Banned. I like how he's saying that the fil this 2009 film has a deep reference to another 2009 film yeah. that was probably made at the same time. It is not the director's background notes that are girly twaddle. The band are mostly young singers who need to have skills of actors. They are prominent in the story. It can enhance the fun to follow their roles and get to recognize them in the non-musical parts. But to forget their background notes, a twaddle is to know something about just why. Banned. That's in that sentence. <laughs> they appear to be an eff effective school ageish front, school ageish front for girls allowed music. Scary bits. <laughs> oh, oh, we, this is like a spoiler for a scary bit? <laughs> the twins had one of the central roles in the 2007. Here, they are in the 2009. Just as much screen time and relevance of role, but imitating actresses who are walking on clouds due to their previous success rather than acting with their previous strength? 
Oh, no. That's a question. They're... That's a question. <laughs> oh, oh, no, the twins, they were starstruck. They were too famous. What is really happening here? In both, it is, in both, it is the first years who are shown to be really in tune. By 2009, the twins have moved on to higher things? The directors are playing about with... Uh, the directors are playing about with traditional values? And that's the end of that. That's all, it. All the reviews? <laughs> yeah, that's all my reviews. Wow. That one was crazier than their one last week. I know. Bartek, finish us off. We've got four comments left and... Guys, this first one's serious. It's, it's very serious. <clears throat> I'm moist. <laughs> I just... I do not troll. <laughs> I only tell truth to people. <laughs> if you... I'm starting again because you guys are just misbehaving. <laughs> I do not troll. I only tell truth to people if you don't believe me. And this is instructions, Ryan. <laughs> Look at the Facebook page and write down and write down St. Trinian's 2. And if you keep scrolling down, you will see that they have wrote what I said. <laughs> Did you look? No, this comment's from years ago. I'm sure it would be really hidden. <clears throat> you would find it. And the next one, this one's also very serious. Wow, there are some... There, those are some cheap sluts. A perfect movie for men. <gasps> <laughs> wow, those are cheap sluts. Like, he tried to pay for them. Like, he knows how cheap they are. And the last two comments I have, I think, really encapsulate the two types of audiences that... Ryan, go on, go on. Really encapsulates the two types of audiences that would watch this film. The first one, OMG, love this movie, or should I say, oh my god. I love the chavs and geeks and posh toddies and emos and first years and eco freakies. <sighs> All amazing. So using the oh my god thingy and face of supermodel brain of super noodle and 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 the in your face. In your face. And the second type and the last comment of the bunch. <clears throat> I'm just here for the slutty outfits. <laughs> <laughs> At least they're honest. Alright, so I've got some gaffes. Gaffes? Goofs and gaffes. Goofs and gaffes. <gasps> Far out, Lauren. We don't yeah. let guests usually do their own segments. But I guess, you know, oh, you're pushing you know your I luck. Do this. Um, okay. So what? these are called anachronisms. Anachronisms? Anachronisms? Yes, anachronisms? Lauren, are you sure that you really want to be doing this right yes. now? You've already come on the show not knowing that the school would be involved. You're getting distracted a lot. You don't know which ist profession yeah. he's going to be next. <laughs> Lauren, I don't know. You're now pronouncing anachronistic wrong. I don't know if you really want to mess. Yeah. All right, I'll just let me start. Just let me start. Okay. okay kick the, the clothes that Lord Pomfrey is wearing at the start of the film are in the style of the mid to late 17th century. That section is supposed to take place in 1589. But in his Therefore, the clothes and wig are completely wrong well, for the time defense, period. in his defence, he was ahead of the curb. And I think that he had a tissue box that had the plastic bit. Shit! <laughs> That's Stask and Hutch reference there. Yeah, the best anachronism of the film. The yes. very beginning of the film, it states that it is set in 1589. Yeah. Then shows a view of another ship through a telescope. Shit. The telescope wasn't invented until 1608. What the fuck? By Hans Libeschi. Was that the thing in the future then? <gasps> no, mm-hmm. no, no. It was different universe. Mm. Oh, right. It was so everything the... that she's reading is just going to be marked up from... as parallel universe. It was from the 1500s of the film Oscar then. Okay. Yeah. The engraving on the ring supposedly shows the coordinates of the treasure according to currently used geographic coordinates. Well, yeah. Which is based on a longitude of the Greenwich Meridian. Yeah. It it was only established first by Sir George Airy in 1851, (gasps) much later Ah. than the events depicted in the story of the treasure. Are you telling me that St. Trinians didn't do their homework on history? Mm-hmm. I don't think so. I think that doesn't sound like it's Centurions a school, I know. It's a school. They, at, won the, they won the school challenge. Yeah. <laughs> at the beginning of the film, the sailors are heard singing 15 men on a dead man's chest. Yeah. Yo-ho-ho and a bottle of rum. This is not a genuine sea shanty, but was created by Robert Louis Stevenson for the novel Treasure Island, published whoa, whoa. in 1883. Lauren. So the sailors would not know it. Lauren, whoa, hold on. You shouldn't have probably sung it then. I don't think we have copyright for that song. <gasps> oh, no. <laughs> Shit. 
Continuity. Oh. Yay! Yay! Is one of the continuity errors my lack of care? Do and then then my care? Like in this <gasps> scene, he said he really cared. In this scene, he said he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> when the girls are at the school looking for the ring, the headmaster goes into his office and the painting on the wall is in perfect condition while all the girls rush out of the office secretly. Then when they are in the van heading back towards St Trinian's, it shows that they ripped the painting to get the ring. You know how that happened? A ghost happened, <laughs> Lauren. Ghost. They've already shown possession and that hell exists? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a Shinigami from Death Note. No, oh, that's right. Sorry. Death Note. When the girls are overlooking the river from outside the Globe Theatre watching Lord Pomfrey escaping in his launch, Celia licks her finger and holds it up to determine the wind speed direction. But the when saliva they still, wasn't there later. But when they steal Jake's ship and it's it moving down the river, none of the sails are unfurled. So well, there's no, yeah. no wind. Whoa, well, hold on. There are a lot Juno of Juno Temple does not just lick a finger willily nilly. She shows her breasts willingly, nilly, but not licking fingers. I know Juno. Juno's a good girl. She does not just lick fingers for the fun of it. She knows what she's doing. I think IMDb needs to get their facts and check. Yeah. And clearly the boats were being pulled by Shinigamis from Death Note who were swimming. Notice Miss Fritten throw a dart at Thwaites' picture. Yeah. yeah but in did. the previous scene, she picks up a letter opener to throw. Well, ghosts. Again... Shinigami's from Death Alright, I've got two more. This is a factual error. Yeah! Which you've picked up on already. Oh. Kelly states that she now works for MI7, which was a real section of the mil- B- British military intelligence, yeah. but is now defunct, and even when it was still in action, it was concerned with the propaganda and censorship, which is a weird one for her to be involved in. Hey, she's a propaganda. She makes you think that you're supposed to be British. It's yep. a front. They're looking for Kira from Death Note. <laughs> They're looking for Akira. And the lucky last one, no, which I was actually going to say earlier, but you guys kept talking. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, Fritten buried so, yeah, his so treasure really under Shakespeare's say. Globe Theatre. The girls discover it under the current Globe Theatre, yeah. which was built in the 1990s on a completely different site. Fuck. So the original treasure would you know what happened? have not been there at all. Shakespeare knew that it would be moved, so he built <gasps> another theatre there, knowing that in the 1990s they would build over it. He's such a smart woman. So guys, that was Centronians 2, The Legend of Fritton's Gold. Now, the rest of Feb, we're going to be covering another film series. Mainly, well, this time around for the first half of Feb, we covered two more feminine movies. Two movies more directed at young girls. Next, we're going to be covering two movies more directed at young boys, I think. And I think, you know, it'll be good to have that balance, that mix there. So do stay tuned because we are going to, uh, later this month, be featuring a yet another duology. And we'll go into the in-depth nature of those. But thank you guys for listening. You guys have been amazing, fantastic, wonderful, superfluous listening people. Lauren, you've lowered our rating down, but you were a great guest anyway. She's just just staring. Lauren, it's not a visual thing. It's an audio thing. (laughs) Do I get final words? No. Lauren, just remember that Ryan was flash mobbing in this episode. (laughs) (laughs) Guys, you have been great. Bartek, you have been great. Lauren, you have been great. Ryan, you have been great. I agree with that last one. Thanks. Uh, you surpassed yourself with the flash mob. I really did. I peaked there, really. You uh, surpassed yourself. You're, you're both better than yourself and also not as good as yourself. Nothing could be as more beautifully said unless it was Shakespeare. That was in Queen Lear, that line. Mm-hmm. About me surpassing myself. But that's it, folks. Uh, this was Centrinians. It's sad to see the franchise end, but that's just reality. It but dies. you guys can appreciate and maybe rip it over and produce a third one. Or a reboot, or a reimagining, or a sequel reboot, a sea boot perhaps. But until next time, remember to be kind to each other. <laughs> rip it ever, please hire me, David Tennant. Marry me? Or else we'll write your names in the I death note. Ooh. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm gonna write my own one in the death note. Oh. <laughs> That's me dying. <laughs>